We love Kirby. We all love Perfect. Kirby. Doc, Doc, Mr. Oh, you're here. There we go. Oh. There you are. <laughs> we assumed that you would be spending your birthday with your wife. Yeah, yeah. But then today happened, and today was a, a busy day. And by the end of it, we both just played some video games. And then she's like, I'm doing that thing with your friends. And I'm like, yeah, sure. We are both yeah, very dead. Well, happy birthday. Also, my brother, also my brother said he was going to send me some shit through Steam, so that's always fun. Hasn't said it yet, though. But I'll get around to it. And it's Sonic. Oh, is it Sonic? <laughs> no, I'm just assuming that Sonic is what you'll be being sent. Yes, Chris is on oh. the I mean, that's happy not an unreasonable birthday. assumption. Hey, thanks! <laughs> he says thanks. Does he miss us? Do you miss us? No! <laughs> he says no. Give me! again! Yes! Yes, I miss you. You guys are great guests. I love you both very much, and I'm always happy to see you. <laughs> Trish says she's cold and she's sick, so... Well, tell her... Don't be that anymore. Tell her that's just what happens when you go to Disney. I, it's I, the I, sickness I, of the soul. Like, like, we don't have COVID, but we probably have a good 12 different diseases as a result. <laughs> yeah, that's what Disney you does. Know, many, many diseases. You need also, to... also, there are germs there, but I'm really more more focused on the spiritual rots you inflicted upon yourself by going to that cursed place. <laughs> well, don't worry. Like, we won't we'll really come back anytime awesome. soon. It's, it's like, okay, uh, it's like if we acknowledge <laughs> that devil is real and has a home, you um, uh, you just went and hung out like on his front porch for like a week. <laughs> and technically it was only a few days, but, you know, time works differently in hell where you were. <laughs> Kirby's having a good time, please. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm... shit, Kirby. I will go over and look at Kirby. <laughs> I am just curbing a lot. Oh, wait, I need to post that we're live. One you moment. playing the um, uh, Forgotten Lands? Uh, Kirby yeah. and this is... the... Um, uh... I know, because it's in 3D. This is not for real what we're playing, but I just had it up on the Switch. Well, play that instead. That's way better. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I mean, it no would, doubt. It would be difficult better. for the... For have the we revealed our Nazi. secret name yet? <laughs> uh, no, we have not. I, I <laughs> We're just going to reveal that with us. When yeah. you got on. Well, play Kirby in the Forgotten Lands. Like, I don't know what your plan is, but it sucks compared to Kirby, probably. Everybody loves Kirby. Oh, I mean, my, plan, really good don't worry, my plan definitely sucks. <laughs> <laughs> All of us are acapelling in completely different directions. I love it. <laughs> I appreciate like giving Kirby a bedroom when I'm not convinced that Kirby knows what a bed is for. Oh, I think Kirby. Um, uh, I think Kirby uh, is. Hmm, no, no, Kirby's the god of his universe. Yeah, that, that's that's the best way to put it. <laughs> I mean, yes. <laughs> if there's one thing Kirby yeah. knows, it's how to use a bed. Yes. Uh, Kirby understand. knows how to eat if there's one thing he knows. <laughs> also, Kirby he just fell out of it. He clearly doesn't know how to work, use it. See. No, no, his pet was hogging up the bed. That makes complete and total sense. <laughs> it's what happens. And also, for the record, th this game has advanced sleep ability. <laughs> Which is remember the old sleep ability? Well, now it's advanced. <laughs> I do like advancing. And Kirby can just summon a bed and fall asleep anywhere. <laughs> it's like good for Kirby. <laughs> so he he definitely know how how bed works. It's part of his copy abilities. <laughs> Alternatively, there is just a bed within him at all times. All right, so what we are doing tonight, in absence of having a focused idea, Nintendo Switch recently <sighs> came out with the ability to do folders, okay? Yes. So, okay. Or so groups. we're going to watch you organize your shit? Yes, Come that's on, exactly man. what we're doing. No! <laughs> Before the stream... I organized every game that I bought on Switch and never actually played because I am a monster. <laughs> I mean, well, looking at this shit, I can see why. Strikey Sisters? You're kidding me, man. You're kidding like, me. if something is $3, I will buy it. And some of these, like, I actually care about. What's wrong like, with you? Wow. I'll, I'll get to it, and then I never do. <laughs> Strikey Sisters? Um, what the fuck, man? Jesus Christ. <laughs> 
I'm I'm upset with you. I will I'm, buy I'm, like anything of a three bucks or like maybe less than ten. <laughs> Alright, I and mean, like, I guess. Like, some of these games, like Double Dragon 4, like, inevitably, I will play that at some point, but I still haven't yet. Wait, you haven't played Hollow Knight? Hollow Knight's great. What okay, technically, doing? I just haven't played Hollow Knight on Switch. Oh, okay, that's, that's much more recent. This was everything that had a playtime of zero. Okay, um... Gunman Climb, so they're good. Yeah, Gunman right, Climb, I played on way 3DS. Too fast. I'm having trouble, I'm having trouble, like, pointing out the one that I feel I should, um, uh... I should like him uh, be mean to you for. What's the dude like with the smiley one in the second place up there, right next to Strikey Sisters? <laughs> uh, it's a trivia game. Trivia for no. Dummies. Delete it. Delete <laughs> it. Why did you buy it for dummies, Brandon? Why? <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> it was no, like no. a dollar. Boot that, boot that shit up. I am going to rock your world. I will know all the answers. You want to do trivia? Let's do trivia. <laughs> No, I don't want to do too trivia. Bad. <laughs> this is inevitably just ending with like the fucking Aqua Team. Just give up and accept the fact that he's dumb, dumb as hell. <laughs> Ten oh multiple God, choice questions. Answer as many questions as quick as you can. How do you even hate... have room on your yes. Switch for all this stuff? Is this all installed fully? Uh, the I mean, ones in this, this, folder, this yes. game is probably like less. This game is probably like three hundred megabytes. Yeah, no, this <laughs> this this game absolutely takes up seventeen kilobytes. They just have a, um, a really good uh, randomizer that like arranges the letters, and they have a um, uh, they have a function like a like one of those like codes you could fit into like the root, the um, the, the boot area of a floppy disk back in the day Ugh. that determines whether or not it's using words. Enceladus is its new planet Saturn. I did not know that. <laughs> was I right? <laughs> you were. <laughs> well, of course I was. <laughs> it's your birthday, boy. He's got I, one point. The rest of us have nothing. I, I literally don't know how to select a choice Amy. on this. This is bizarre. I guess I just highlight whichever one's correct. I think is correct. Uh, my wife would know this one, but my um, genie said Amy, and I'm with genie 100%. It was Amy. <laughs> I'm not yeah, I barely wrong. remembered that Pitch Perfect was real, so... <laughs> not <laughs> only is it real, but my wife has seen the sequels with her friends as a girl's night. <laughs> How many sequels are there? I don't know. There's a one. third one. Oh, dang. Like Mad Witch! <laughs> That's one more than I expected. No, <laughs> tomato. I was about to say tomato would be correct here, right? Yes. <laughs> I'm concerned by spiced milk, though. <laughs> Spiced milk. Ah, yes. The spiciest of milk. <laughs> it's like how you gotta drink the Coke milk to truly see beyond the veil. Co Coke milk? Coke milk. <laughs> what is that? It's like what Pepsi milk, it? but different. It's like Pepsi milk. <laughs> that sounds awful. Yes, it, yes, it is. Huh? Pepsi AM. Mm -hmm. uh, did any of you guys have, like, those weird fucked up friends in high school that talked about doing the gallon challenge, and then one of them was stupid enough to actually do it? Okay, wait, wait, oh, everyone no. stop. It, I think the game froze because it was designed by idiots. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it says right there, yeah, it's dummies. It's... Presumably it's also by dummies. All right. What kind of spray can was invented in 1927? I will want to say... Yeah, well, guess aerosol. what? It froze forever, so we're done with it now. I hope it bricked your entire Switch. <laughs> I hope your entire Switch just absolutely rejected the idea of this. Okay, we're not playing that anymore. <laughs> Obviously. I gotta say, though, you all are super impressed that I knew the moon of Saturn, right? Yeah, I, I was, yeah. actually. That was something that I did <laughs> not good. think was within your purview. I was a kid... I liked planets. All kids should like planets. Also, like, like anytime Junio. like a moon has a weird name, there's like a ninety percent chance it's one of Saturn's. Saturn has so many fucking moons. <laughs> Too many. Need to eliminate like not four. information I knew. <laughs> yeah, you got some lumines. You got some uh, Giga Alt. I don't know what that is. Giga Alt Wrecker. I actually have that on PS4, too, because I'm an idiot. <laughs> Wait, you bought it twice and didn't play it either time? I am an idiot! <laughs> what part of that don't you get? <laughs> I mean, does it like, look there's cool? there's degrees here! <laughs> like, I don't know, like, the anime art style on the um, uh, thumbnail there was generic as hell, but you can't judge a game completely by that. Only partially. Yeah, I think the trailer's really good. What was the name of it again? Giga Arc, Rec Arc, Giga Arc Reactors? Giga... Oh, Giga Drawbreaker. Alt Wrecker. Wrecker. 
Racker. Cooking Simulator. Are we playing that fate game again? No, this this is a game I haven't played. No, I've seen this. This is this is exactly what you think when you see the word simulator. There's some like <laughs> Huh. Huh. Yeah, no, it looks kind of cool. Giga, a wrecker, alt. Yeah, no, that was the thing. It, it, it looked interesting. Yeah, no, there's a there's, there's 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 a neat idea going on there. Cooking simulator. Is this like Surgeon Simulator? I have no it's idea. Not, I've never played it. <laughs> I mean, it's covered in blood, so I can only assume yes. That's that was Surgeon Simulator's whole thing. I mean, it's mostly just that, like, oh, it's really hard to make food when you control awkwardly. Yeah, like, turns out... Like the simulator uh, shit. Turns out human motions and, like, moving a mouse or a controller are not one-to-one. -one. Yep. No matter what Nintendo would like you to think. Nintendo, Nintendo, oh my god, you think is a liar sometimes. God, this frame rate. Is this? Is it running this badly or is it just streaming this badly? Also, the holy shit. Was Kirby was also running poorly. Okay. Extremely poorly. Sorry. Okay, so streaming poorly. We're back to Should that I? again? It was good last week. Or two weeks ago. <laughs> Statement of use. Uh, sure. Agree. Calling out from Scantland. Calling out from Scantland's Video calling dialer? What the fuck? My phone updated and it sucks and I hate it. Yeah, that's what happens when phones update. That tends to be the case. What? <laughs> What? This is this is the most bizarre. You just gotta do thing. I don't know why there's a big phone here, but I mean, like, I guess the first thing you have to do is. Oh, the first thing you have to do is scan the fucking QR code to get you the menu. It sucks, and I hate it, and I don't know how to call people anymore. So did it did it when I thought I was bringing up his profile thing, so I could make okay. I, I am not doing whatever they want me to do. I'm going into free range mode because I want to cook that phone. <laughs> Why do you want to cook the phone? Because I think I'm he just doesn't to, like it. That seems to be an <laughs> option, <laughs> or at least I hope it's an option. Yes, yeah, it is. Is. it's a simulation thing. Calling from Four months ago. What the hell, uh, Professor Chrissy? Yeah, sure. Uh, Accept it. Oh yeah, Chrissy. Calling yeah, from great. Man's world. Oh, did we reveal yet? I forgot. <laughs> yeah, oh, yes. Not. So while while this damn thing is loaded, <laughs> let's reveal. Wait, is somebody in the chat? No, it's you. <laughs> You're it's in the beat. chat. Beat is in the chat. Cussing. Someone ban Beat. No. Cannot be ban Beat for cussing. That just makes him stronger. Keep screaming, <laughs> keep screaming, shut the fuck up at me. It only makes my opinions worse. Yes. No, we have selected through consensus a, um, a title for streams. And I feel like I need to share some parts of this conversation with us before we get to the eventual reveal. Uh, Goggle Bob opens um, uh, with saying, we need a name. And I responded by um, uh, saying, What's wrong with bullying Goggle Bob for fun and profit? Which, Which is the name of the, name of the, of the chat, chat, in case anyone is curious. Jeannie, you're like here pretty much every single time. Would you like access to this group chat? I can add you, no problem. <laughs> yeah, sure. All right, sick. Uh, let me do that. <laughs> this is what I would do if I had a kitchen that was like this. Cool. Go at it. You should be able to 
see the Twitter DMs at some points. Um, some of these suggestions were, um, uh, let's see here. I propose, oh yes, I said, I propose the Minecraft mateys on account of all how much Minecraft we all play. And also, we are pirates on the high seas. That would just make it sound like we were fucking, uh, <laughs> a fucking rareware game that I don't fucking remember the name of any time. Yeah, pirate like, thing. Galgut Bob suggested the downtown abbeys, <laughs> which I believe, um, uh, which I believe we all should punch him in the face for at least. Hit, se hit sensation of ten years ago. It's as relevant <laughs> as the Minecraft thing. Also, it's <laughs> no children still play Minecraft. No one has talked about downtown abbey in eight years. Are they making it a movie again? They already made it a movie like four years ago. A second movie. <laughs> I don't know why they would do that. That sounds like that sounds like the dreams of a madman. <laughs> Sounds like the nightmares of a madman. That too. Um, Goggle Bob suggested two guys and the third one. I said, nah, we usually have Genie on. And Gal Scrubs sometimes too. So really, it should be two guys and the third one and the gal, and sometimes the fourth guy. <laughs> Where's the pizza place? <laughs> uh, and so finally, Fanboy came up with, how are these getting worse? <laughs> and we all agreed that. That was good. We had changed it slightly. We tweaked it to uh, even worse. So the full title is, How Are These Getting Even Worse? And that is our name. We have a name. Now. The only and I will never ever use it again. What's happening at this stage? What are you doing? <laughs> Why are you doing to that to the poor fry box? Goggle Bob, how are these getting even worse? <laughs> yeah, like, seriously, Goggle Bob. I feel like I feel like you're here to you don't blame for this. What are you doing with the gigantic tank of Oh fuel? oh he's seeing if he can something up. Oh, okay, okay, he's trying to kill us all. And he one hundred percent can. I believe it. I believe in him. Let's go. I am deep frying propane. <laughs> I might be the only one who finds this amusing, but I do. I mean it's gonna explode eventually, right? I mean, otherwise this Deep's game would just be noted poorly fire and explosion enthusiast, so... I do like if you want to, effort when if you wanted to sell me on this game, you would uh, you would allow me to blow up the entire kitchen. <laughs> That's what Start I'm trying to do. What if you blow up the moon? Uh, fuck the moon. That would solve all, all our problems. The tank go? I don't know. <laughs> Wait, did it just despawn? <laughs> I... This is bullshit! Also, your frame rate's like three frames a second. Yeah, which, you know, that's not that dissimilar correct. from working in an actual kitchen. <laughs> I don't know I, why I'm that's... I'm now happening. much more concerned about working in a kitchen than I've ever done before. It's not that bad. Granted, I didn't yeah, but I don't I expect the frame rate in real life to lower. Oh, yeah, no, that happens in the Grand Canyon, too. It's just too much to render. <laughs> The, the two most similar places on the world, Grand Canyon and the Johnny Rockets kitchen. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hi, Mags. Oh, hey, Mags. Good day and welcome. Hey. Day three of moving around life yep, update. Yep, you didn't feel? Oh, no, oh, Mags. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Believe me, Mags, kitchen. this is all extremely normal. In fact, it's even more normal than my experience, because I'd move out until, like, way the fuck late. <laughs> oh, I moved out way the fuck early, so... There you go, see? So we got I like feel a like whole... breaking brooms is just a thing that happens. We got like a whole range of experience. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, mine was more. Uncle Sam came and dragged me away when I was 17, so. Oh, yeah, shit. Yeah, that sucks. That's fucked up. Sorry, man. Eh, well. I enlisted, so. Oh, yeah. Wait, you enlisted so. at 17? Yes. Damn, I know you. It, it sure is great that we let that be a thing that can happen. I had to get both my parents to sign the uh, waiver. Dang. That must have... That must have been a lot. <laughs> well... <laughs> I just saw a thing explode. Um, yeah, I had about a week between... Oh, there it goes. I am vastly <laughs> underwhelmed by that explosion. Yeah. I am... You were about, saying that. Yeah. I, say, I had about a week between... Graduation of high school and uh, stepping out into yellow footprints there in San Diego. Hey. Oh, uh, I love my gap week. <laughs> yeah, that's intense. Can I use it to see the world? 
I did see the world, but they paid me to do it, so it wasn't that bad. I mean, that's something at least. Yeah, take what you can get. All right, Goggle Bob, uh, I've come to the conclusion this kitchen is boring. Yeah, this is... This is a very boring kitchen, and the explosions were not even apocalyptic. <laughs> okay, play something else, then. Just give me a moment, I'm adjusting to make the screen work a little better. Okay. Have you considered knocking down your bit rate and resolution? Have exactly you considered whispering sweet nothings in your, what are you recording on, uh, fucking, uh, what, what's the name of the, like, stream thing? Uh... Oh, something. Yes. No, no. OBS is the program. It's it's yeah. the like it's the capture card software thing. Oh, uh, probably probably in Elgato of some description. Elgato. Is that it? Elgato. Elgato. That's the one. Elgato. Yeah. Have you considered whispering sweet nothings to your Elgato to uh, to increase increase its self esteem and make it feel better? Ultimately, have you done what I do whenever Excel steps to me and just threaten its life? <laughs> Ensure that there are levels of pain beyond what it can comprehend, and that you will sample every single one of them. I mean, it doesn't work when it's something that wants to die, like most capture cards. <laughs> oh, that is true. Those are those are things that those are some of the least hardy objects ever. I don't know what you did, but you made a three four, and that's all. Holy awesome. shit! Wow. <laughs> I love the smushed clock. Oh, dang, that's even better. <laughs> we, are, we are experiencing brand new levels of smushedness. <laughs> Calling out from Scantling. Calling out from Scantling's world. 224. Whatever nonsense we play is not worth it. <laughs> Get the most fucked up resolution you can imagine. Okay, we're done with Yeah, this. I don't know. I don't know what you did here, but I like it. Let's keep I want 18 this. by 4 and a half. <laughs> yes. Okay, we still need to figure out another game while I adjust a bit right here. Uh. uh Trio the Punch, Never Forget Me. Big Buck Hunter Arcade. Wait, why would you do that? Goggle Bob, I'm, I'm disappointed. Even for $3, you know what that is. Why would you Ooh, do that? Oh, Pro Force. That one's fun. You can blow stuff up. It is, if it, it passes, it passes the B qualifying test of having oh, a lot wait, of Oh, wait, Monster Boy, that game actually owns. Yeah, like, you got actual good games here. I don't know why you're yeah, not playing. Yeah, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> also, you're still, like, at the, um, uh, the wrong aspect ratio, and it's, oh, like, absolutely. constantly wrong. We're, we're going to leave it at the wrong aspect ratio. <laughs> That's what this stream deserves. Uh, I'm what getting happened? aspect ratioed. It's what like one of those that? meme tweets. Uh, you know what? Uh, Fuck you. Check your aspect uh, ratio. <laughs> one more jump. Bob, are you about one step away from getting Jump King? Because I've seen that. Nope. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I have no way a jump king. Hey, you could be though. In fact, maybe you should be. All right, I'm aware of what killer fire is. I don't know what trigger witch is, but I do appreciate the idea of a wizard that casts gun in the most literal sense of just going to the gun store and applying um, for a firearm license. I think that's exactly what this game is about. I don't think you need a license for this. I said I do disagree with this game on a philosophical level because no witch should be allowed to use a gun. It makes it more difficult to kill. Same as wizards. What about Bayonetta? <laughs> Why did you oh, that's right. Me? She's technically a witch, isn't she? Yeah, uh, she's the a bullet number witch. witch. Huh. And, uh, no, had, don't had you fucking that. bring up bullet witch, you piece <laughs> of shit. I had not considered Bayonetta. I think I will have to like reassess my entire worldview for a minute here. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do down? Okay, Mags I gotta is say, Mags is absolutely killing it choices. in the chat. And, like, and like, I feel like we are failing her by having this garbage stream, but she is producing such incredible content for <laughs> Are you saying that we are even worse? <laughs> oh, God. You know what? I regret everything. I regret... <laughs> I regret... Uh, I regret taking that walk on the morning 
uh, in like fucking uh, May 2020 when I checked my phone and found out that I'd gotten messages from Goggle Bob and you were like, hey, you want to stream once a week? And I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. I to did. graduate from the stock. Oh, like, like a bump stock. I get it. Should pick up the Gun Vault Striker pack. They just announced Gun Vault 3? That feels weird. Yep. I thought that was already. Oh, no. No, Luminous Avenger X is a Gun Vault spinoff. They announced actual Gun Vault 3. Okay, like, as somebody who has gone to firing ranges and the like, the idea of just leaving your AK 47 on the table. With a bunch of bullets is like the most like irresponsible shit ever. <laughs> but Mag uh, Mags, Mags, I I feel like I feel like uh, your best thing you could do with your crumbs is hope that some helpful ants make their way into your abode and take them away for you. Ants are nature's friends. Definitely not a pest that you is, need to get rid of. Is that our nature <laughs> fact for the day? Yes, that is our fun animal fact. Oh, Mags is gonna. Try to fight, fight you to the death for stealing fun animal facts. <laughs> uh, I remember when she drew a comic about fighting me to the death. That shit was awesome. <laughs> it might still happen. Coming out from Scatman's War. So so far, this game is just basically Zelda. Yeah, it reminds me a bit in art style of Gunman's Proof. I'm reminded of what was that? Uh, what was that? Uh, roguelite, or maybe not roguelite, ran randomized game that Kalir did at Let's Play of a while back, uh, uh, where the final boss was literally capitalism. <laughs> you know, same as in real life. No, no, the capitalism is a mid boss. We still have other problems to contend with after capitalism dies. Oh yeah, but you know. For a lot of us, it'll be the final boss we face. <laughs> Fun animal fact, ants are. Okay, so Mags and I apparently have come to terms on, um, uh, on Fun Animal Facts. <laughs> we have come to terms, big O. Man, it sucks that the writer of Big O turned out to be completely insane. Completely yeah, he went insane, insane at some point. And, like, via Digimon, completely insane. Yeah, he seems to have just become internet poisoned at some point. Cancel culture. You know what? I've decided that I will like this game a lot more if um, uh, it turns out you only throw the gun. You never actually <laughs> shoot it. This is an entire society built around tossing guns at faces. Larger and larger guns require much more strength training to um, uh, throw effectively. And huge guns, like, you know, like uh, tactical mounted machine guns and the like. Those are just like status symbols. Nobody knows how to use stuff. What do people do with throwing knives? Cook their dinner, you know, cut, chop their vegetables. Those aren't thrown then. Those are regular knives. Yeah, I know. They am, uh, I mean, any knife can be a throwing knife. All you have to do is throw it. But why would you? Their culture is built around throwing guns. <laughs> we have come to town, I feel like there are a lot of things this game could do that would make me immediately say, uh, that make me immediately say this game is good now. Uh, none of them have happened yet, but... <laughs> but Hope I, Springs Eternal. I hope those spring eternal. Also, I'm pretty sure that gun is actually a 3D model going through a ton of filters because the way it turns with your um, uh, sprite is way too natural. It's kind of a weird, weird thing to look at. Like how um, uh, he has the animated gun for exactly one scene in Roger Rabbit, but they never bothered to animate it again because it was too much work. <laughs> it was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. Maybe they're just distorting the sprite. Either way, it's uh, weirdly fluid. I don't like it. Weirdly, not. I thought they were the story of the sprite, but it could be anything. Yeah. Man, I was looking at a, I was looking at a really, like, shitty-looking old fighting game 
Uh, last night, that was one of those things where it's like, if I put this in front of you in the right context, you would think it was something uh, made up for some fictional purpose. Because it was an Avengers fighting game made by Data East that looked like its primary artistic inspiration was Donkey Kong Country. Oh yes, I, I played that game for the FGC at one point. The, uh... Oh man, I forgot about that. Yeah, it just looks uh, fake. It looks like a fake game. Yeah, no, I can't disagree with that. And the, the like characters involved in it are like totally like bootleg Marvel characters. Like you don't get to play as Thor, but you get to play as You get Thunderstrike. Yeah, Thunderstrike. <laughs> no. What if Thor was that. a sad divorced man? <laughs> Thor is a sad divorced man. And also, sure. Giant Depends. Man is summonable, and he's just like a Monty Python-esque giant hand. That's actually sure, hilarious. Man. I actually like that. Mag says she restarted her Animal Crossing save because three of her villages had two similar color palettes. I feel like that's... that's, that's right. I feel like that's a little bit mean, uh, but at least you didn't, like, start, um, uh, turn it off because you got Rodney or something. Uh, Mag, have you gotten... <laughs> Please respect Rodney. <laughs> Have you gotten I through feel... Pokemon Arceus yet, or are you just still searching for the best colors? Arbeats refuses to honor special bulletin offering a free roast beef snack called Divorced Men. Lots of upset Divorced Men of this Arceus. Sorry, I that just thought tweet. of that beautiful drill tweet. That is an incredible drill tweet. Um, <laughs> the one... When I dug up earlier was somebody, uh, somebody doing <laughs> semen retention. Oh God! <laughs> and like they literally said, ah, I can feel, I can feel this, like, uh, oh this, yeah, I saw this, this right my brain. <laughs> I can feel so much smarter. <laughs> it's like literally, Drill made a tweet about that <laughs> four fucking years ago, which is just standing my head to make the cum fall all over my brain and make me smarter. <laughs> We have, uh, we have li long lived in a world beyond parody. <laughs> I mean, did anybody know anybody in high school who actually believed in that nonsense? Because I did. No. <laughs> no. Yep. Believed what in high school? That if you somehow didn't have sex or jerk off, that you would become a god. <laughs> Living that no fab lifestyle. No, outside of just a generic Christian. Hatred for sex. Yeah, no. That was, that was generally that was more. That was generally like a different uh, uh, thing, yeah, like yeah, a the, different strain. I think I will get superpowers because I have had more <laughs> Yeah, I would have felt that anyway. So. <laughs> Just incredible. <laughs> basically lives off the incongruity of how like Paris. violent it is in this like fantasy happy world. It is yeah. uh, it is extremely uh, I hate using this as a descriptor, but I'm having trouble coming up with a better one. It is extremely new grounds. Yes. Yeah, no. The thing is though, I have a weird fondness and even dare I say respect for new ground blood and gut style because I don't know. There's something like we lost along the way. It's a, it's a, our, it was art and, and, and I mean, we, we still have these. Like we do, this. we do, we do. <laughs> they, they still exist. But like, this was made by like a team of people. Newground stuff was made by like a guy, <laughs> probably a high school student. You know, I haven't been on Newground for ages. My understanding is now it's like basically a dark. Uh, yeah, basically. Basically, only DeviantArt has rules against porn, and Newground does not. Ah. <laughs> it never did. On a side note, right I don't believe that DeviantArt has rules against porn, because I've seen evidence to the contrary. <laughs> they have some rules. <laughs> some rules. No rules. One rule. It's literally called deviant art. <laughs> you guys there are different kinds of deviant, you deviant. Like, you name something Tumblr, and it's like, okay, fine. You need something deviant art, and it doesn't create a lot of imagination. 
I feel like I feel like I saw a lot more brain warping than Dumbledore than DeviantArt, which is not DeviantArt, the than like DeviantArt or Nerd Grants. Now that I think about it, so that's okay. a weird thing to think about. I'm right, catching up on Mags in the chat. She did a full playthrough of Arceus. Arceus. How good? Arceus. Arceus. And um, uh, but she wasn't happy about it, which you know, relatable. It's a good game. I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, so I have to finish it. I'm. At the part where you gotta collect every Pokemon. Oh yes. Gotta well, catch them all. Gotta catch them. Like all. you've kind of finished it at that point, just there, you know. Yeah, it's your decision about how much of that's an acceptable ending to you. Yeah, like how much Pokemon do you want to play? Which I feel honestly could be fine, you know. Yeah, not. I mean, personally, I yeah, just collect everything, but I could see not wanting to. Like, yeah, but like you know, it's not so it bad. Is. It's just you gotta feel the. Pokedex up to a certain level, and it's just like, ah, uh, Gotta catch them all, gotta catch them all. Some of them, like, I'm stuck right now on Cleffa. The oh, Clefairy yes, you can only get it at a full moon and it randomly appears. Yeah. And you oh. can only level up its guide by actually catching them. Not mm -hmm. anything else. It's, uh, I think dreadful. I catching them, and you could also feed them, if memory serves. So yeah, catching and feeding. Point. But that means you still have to have run into them. Yeah. <laughs> but they're a rare encounter. Yeah, it's just a pain. They're a rare encounter that appears like once a week or something. It's in the ass. Like they're there at night, but like predominantly for the full moon is the idea. So while you're doing this, I'm going to do what I always do when I deem whatever you're playing is boring and bad. And play Smash and everything. get drunk? No, no, I'm gonna play Hotline Miami. Mm -hmm. well, I can see mm -hmm. how this would inspire that. When well, I have Hotline Miami, yeah. you should have Hotline Miami. Most of these bowling ball creatures are straight out of this game, right? Stupid fun Hotline fact. Uh, the game Hotline 2 got banned in um, uh, Australia. Yeah, that sounds like Australia, especially at the time. There's censorship laws. Whether or not this was justified is honestly um, something you can probably argue about forever. But, but hotline the particulars. Hotline two. Hotline two. Hotline no, one was I'm not there. Hotline one was safe. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah I know right. Yeah no, the game about somebody literally murdering everybody in Florida was fine, but Hotline two, oh, that one had to go. The reason for this <laughs> was because of the rape scene in the beginning of Hotline two, which is immediately revealed to be actually a scene in a movie. As in, like, literally actors on a it's set. It's double fiction. Yeah, it's it was a it was a fictional thing taking place in the scene. I don't know if the game needed that. I probably say you know they could have skipped it; wouldn't have made much of a difference. But you know. But anyway, when I'm uh, when Hotline Miami two and one and two, like the collection was released on Switch, um. Uh, Everybody was like, um, uh, why am, um, uh, it got released in Australia for like a good eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> they just had forgotten to, um, uh, they had forgotten to, um, uh, they had forgotten to like delist it. <laughs> so it was just available. A ton of people bought it really quickly. <laughs> Can't now put the genie back in the bottle now, Australia. I was about to say, yeah, no, you're fucked up, Australia. The Switch is... it's not region-specific, right? Yeah, it's region-free. It's region oh, it is. Yeah, but yeah, the, so the But the eShops technically have their own listings, but also you can just make an account for another region and download from there, and it will know what... If you have the equivalent game in another region, it knows that and just gives it to you. <laughs> just gives it. All right, I've lost... Interest in Trigger Witch due to a Switch I don't feel like playing with. So, mo moving on! <laughs> uh, have you considered... Uh... uh the? Exactly. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Did you have a stroke? Uh... uh Monster Boy, the Junio Collection or something, I don't know. I refuse to play anything <laughs> good. <laughs> Why? Why start now? Well, this might be good. Let's kill it with fire. Then why are you playing it? 
These are the games that I bought because I hate myself and I'm going to play it now, damn it. I don't understand you goggles. <laughs> There seems to be little, if any, internal consistency to the proclamations they're making. So the question I have is, I believe this is chronologically the third time we have been on Gogglebob's home screen, yes? Yeah, something like that. Every single one of those times, we've just been staring at Kirby. <laughs> yeah. A delightful game that I actually would like to see played because, you know, I haven't tried Kirby in a little while. And I kind of uh... wonder if, like, I limitedly and stuff. It's a 3D so Kirby. why the fuck aren't we doing that? But no. No, we're, we're locked in now. Let's see what this Kill with Fire is all about. This looks bad. This is actually pretty fun. I've seen this one before. It looks cheap, I guess, would be the correct uh, description. I should have gotten I mean, that. like, the sort to be expected. This guy probably had, like, $5 to bus tokens to work with. I was about to say, keep in mind, I did pay, pay like, probably $3 for this. Then he's already recouped half his budget. <laughs> Look. Game Dub sucks. Game Dub I'm not disagreeing. Sucks. I'm just saying that, like, anytime you see something that looks this cheap, you have two options. Someone either didn't care at all or someone cared a lot, but it's betrayed by just, like, this is the assets I have. Yeah, this is what I had to work with. It's what I got. <laughs> yeah. Hope nobody here has, um, what's it called, arachnophobia? No, not particularly. Okay, good. This is either going to be very bad or very cathartic for you, one or the other. Purpose my fork made pizza for my birthday, and she also got me the big cookie. I got the big cookie. Oh man! How big I is like the big cookie? cookies? Big enough. Like bigger. think like a cookie, like and then make it way bigger. Like the size of a plate. Bigger. I wouldn't want to eat all of that at once. I think I would. I'm not going to. It's, you know, it's the big cookie. It's not like a single serving. <laughs> The concept of a multi-serving cookie is still inherently perplexing, though. I mean, I guess, but like that's that's why we have it's knives. Not something, it's something you typically like take bites out of and then leave there, and it's like, oh, that feels weird to do. I suppose so, but I'm going to just cut it into pieces and have and enjoy them piece by piece. Uh, In fact, I'm going to start that right now. I think that legally makes it a cake. <laughs> I mean, it is your birthday. That's allowed. Well, where's the bathroom? It's happy skeleton day to all. It's the most specialist time of the year. It's the most angry time of the year. Well, I can't find the bathroom. <laughs> And I feel like that should be more of a thing. I mean, that would just give you the opportunity to flush them, and that's like the opposite of on air, so... Am I, like... Like, spiders are apparently resilient in this universe. Oh, yeah. Dollar, dollar bills. That's Oh, okay. This, right? So we rules get everything now. We couldn't get the money. Dollar, dollar, bill, no, 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 no. Oh, yes, I ordered an Xbox One. Hey, congrats. Or Xbox X, excuse me. Okay, I was, I was confused by that for a you moment. You know, like, I play video games vaguely professionally, and I have trouble keeping track of what video game is which, or which Xbox is which, rather. 
that's, that's not that hard. They haven't made an Xbox One X in like three years at this point. Xbox. Wait. X Series. <laughs> Xbox Series X and Series S. And, but there's a One X. Yeah, but the One X has not been produced in like three years. They killed it precisely to keep people from confusing it with the Series X. I can understand that. But yes, it's been ordered and I don't know. I'll like, probably grab one in the next few months. Excited to My play brother got one. Flight he wants to play it things. To pick up that before I pick up an Xbox 5. Or a PlayStation 5. I mean, it's easier to get a hold of, certainly. I was about to say, I feel like if I could have a PlayStation 5, I would by now, but I'm now I'm just kind of offended by it. It's... large and ugly. Don't know what else to tell you. And it, it, it amazes me that it has not been available for this long. When theoretically, what, the, uh, Sony has a very PS5. big reason to have them available. I'm sure they would like them to be more available at this stage, but... I mean, at this point, it's kind of weird that they aren't have it be more available. I mean, there's, there's also that whole uh, shortage that's going on with essentially every part of the components of these new systems. Mm -hmm. So I was hoping this would be more exciting, but it in no way is. Mm -hmm. Just kind of running Not around. Not enough fire. Hitting spiders. Yeah, I haven't seen any fire. Yeah, no, I, I mean, it tells me to go to the bathroom, but, like, I haven't found the bathroom. You've been lost in this house for ten minutes. Yes. And that's honestly kind of tragic. Like rooms like there there's a door that i would expect could maybe be the bathroom but i can't open that door and i just broke a window can i get out i mean I can the bathroom door is probably locked from the inside i mean he's got the key on the like stop at the um, uh, door frame yeah no, that, right? makes, that would make sense but no it, it, apparently i have to kill more spiders is that that room by the fireplace there the door by the fireplace. Yes. The door Crossy, by the super fun is apparently sealed and says exit. So I assume that's like. Oh no, wait, that's a different one. Where's the fireplace? Yeah, no, that that is probably it. But I need to kill four spiders first. You no, know, this reminds me of these for spiders for three reasons. All right, the Stanley the Parable. Ah, nice. I finally won. I knew I'd get through to you. I knew I'd fucking get through to you. I feel like the best description of Kirby is uh, Brian David Gilbert's in um, uh, one of his old... Uh, uh, name escapes me. His, like, stupid deep dives on video games that have probably gone back in the day. Mm-hmm. But he described Kirby as a very strong circle. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> First you draw. I've always been con I've always been curious. If Kirby is shaped like a friend, what is an enemy shape? Have you I don't know. <laughs> a square. <laughs> I was thinking a trapezoid. Are you insulting Box Boy? <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. I'm going with trapezoid. I'm just Those saying, God, well, like you promised us. You promised us a two-player game with boxes, and it wasn't a boxing game. I don't know what you expect me to, how you expect me to respond to that. Like, what boxing game would you honestly have won? I don't know. Gotta be at least one of them out there in the wild, in the wild blue yonder. You're gonna have to play Rain King. Ooh, that's an option. <laughs> Oh man, it is windy outside here. So the question I have is the Kirby games, the like thing that has always set them apart for me at least, is the ability to basically fly infinitely forever with literally zero restrictions. <laughs> Not there, literally zero restrictions. I, was say, there I are mean, you're going, it's slow. It's slow. Well, also, like, just yeah. like eventually Kirby in most of the games will eventually sort of run out of it, breath. Really? <laughs> I've never experienced that. It depends I guess on the I've never game, because like in the original he never does. Yeah, that's that's sort of like what I'm basing myself off of here. That and um, uh, yeah, and Kirby's Adventure on the NES. 
Ah. Wow, we were all uselessly jawing about Hotline Miami collection finished installing. Nice. I'm surprised yes. you did not already have it installed. It's on the other switch. Ah. The one that my the one that my wife and I exclusively use for Poyo Poyo now. That is <laughs> fair. Lot to unpack there. <laughs> What's wrong with Poyo Poyo? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, it's just the concept of needing, like, a Switch that's just always Puyo. I mean, okay, it's not something that has to be always Puyo, it's on the, um, but it's on the TV she uses, but more often than not, right? It's on the big living room TV. I typically don't play video games, like, in the living room because I feel like I'm taking up too much space, you know? That sort obviously. of shit? Yeah, obviously. How do you feel about Puyo Puyo? Uh, I, I don't, but I think it's, I, we, we don't even call it that, we call it Mean Bean. <laughs> That's what uh, it is. Well, yeah, well, you're not playing Puyo Puyo. But it's Puyo, Puyo 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 was like, a, was like the first one that was four players. It's a Japanese joke. Ah, okay. Weird. Yon is one of the, reading, one of the readings for four. <laughs> hey. So I've got Kirby moving stairs. That's very important. Save data cloud. I don't want to save data. Just so I can level select to my heart's content. Yeah, yeah, I was I was surprised to see that you were in suddenly a puzzle stage. Like, how's this work? Like, because it looks like there's already a solution. I like, mean, I mean, you just have to move these little things around. Whee! Go Kirby. Thinking Rabbit would be proud. I mean, like, I think you get a bonus if you do this actually quickly, and I'm never gonna do it actually quickly. There we go. on some other shit right now. Kirby song? Yes. No. Probably. It's Street Fighter music, too. I mean, it's just hard to immediately tell. But yeah, the Street Fighter music I was humming was fucking Ken's theme. Got it. Yeah, fuck Kenneth. I always hate Kenneth. No, Kenneth's a good dude. Yeah, I agree. He's one of the few that actually occasionally takes the option to go home and be a family man. Yeah. Seems like a nice dad to his kids. Seemingly the only uh, reason that Ryu was able to go out training is that Ken is there to support him. I was about to say. Oh yeah, there is there is zero doubt in my mind that Ken absolutely um uh, that Ken absolutely um uh, pays Ryu's bills. <laughs> yeah, no, he's yeah, been following him for years. And like Ryu doesn't even understand it. Like it's just something... Ryu's not even sure what money is. Yeah, he just no, knows that it's... it's something Ken knows what it is. Just yeah. somehow it all comes together, and Ryu's happy with that. Also, Ken is the, only, is the one that's actually willing to have students. <laughs> yeah, we all see how that worked out. <laughs> that's more because Sean's really bad. <laughs> yeah, well, it is a poor <laughs> teacher that has Sean, I think, as the cone. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's how that works. It's not implied that Sean is his only student, just that Sean's his worst. <laughs> To the point that he had to be nerfed to just uh, make Street Fighter 3 work. <laughs> <laughs> they nerfed him into oblivion just to make him lore, lore compliant. 
So how high can you hover in this game? Like, can you just go over that obstacle? No, you, you can hover basically to that jump height, basically. Yes, and there are places where the game kind of plays with it. Like, like you can't jump all that high, but on the other hand, if you like fall off a stage, you can fly back to where you were. Yeah, it's like the wherever you so like you'll run into situations where it's like you need to find a higher place to jump from, but you can stay at that height in space, uh, the the height of wherever that jump was, even if it's you know required you to jump from an elevated area. Oh hey, B, did you see the developer interview about this game's development? I did not. What am uh, what's what shocking revelations were there? But aside from the interesting technical choices they made, where it's like every like the camera is actually heavily like collision detection is heavily dependent upon what the camera sees. Where it's like if it looks like you should have hit based on the camera angle, even if in three D space you should not, it just fudges it for you and says you hit. That's kind of neat. Uh, yeah, very neat. Which is an interesting technical choice, but also Nintendo apparently had to keep telling the developers at how like you you have to populate these 3D areas with more en with more enemies. Like there needs to be more happening in these levels because otherwise people are just gonna get bored. There's just not gonna be enough happening. And the developers at how were very resistant on the basis that they did not want it to they did not want Kirby to be marauded by too many enemies. They wanted Kirby to not No, I did see I did see that yeah. quote out of context that I'm uh that they were um, uh, very upset at the idea of anything hurting Kirby, because Kirby is their special boy. <laughs> yeah, like, it's basically just, like, Nintendo keeps telling them, like, you, you have to fill these levels with more things than you would in 2D, because otherwise there's just not enough happening. And uh, there's just like, no. Just, but that would make Kirby sad. <laughs> yeah, we don't want <laughs> Kirby to be sad. Yeah. Uh... But yeah, so, some interesting technical choice, uh, technical stuff just about like the uh, choices. Yeah, I would they like made. to read that. Uh, yeah, no, it very much reminds me of the design stuff on Celeste, where they talk about like coyote time and stuff, with the mm -hmm. idea that you really shouldn't be able to run right off a block and jump. But it it makes sense when you're playing. You always you always make the choice that makes the player feel correct rather than necessarily being correct. Always make the right choice. I think that's the important question. Is are those the shoes that Kirby wears, or are they his feet? I have never uh, seen Kirby take his shoes off, so that. I don't is... think Kirby. I think those are just Kirby's feet. Kirby has little Kirby steps is a ball, on. and therefore his his feet are also like these weird little ball. I've never seen anything officially, but I have seen fan art of Kirby with feet. Okay. And it, uh, yeah, I've yeah, seen no, those before. Wrong. On a side note, Sonic but... the Hedgehog doesn't have toes either. <laughs> yeah, exactly. God. Well, that makes it worse, because for Sonic, those are explicitly shoes. No, no, no. <laughs> no, they're not. That's just how he is. I can't believe so, you would deny Sonic the Labyrinth. The weird little guy. <laughs> no, that, that was just his feet got stuck in cement. What are you confused by? <laughs> Sonic Labyrinth's official plot. I will not let you erase Sonic Labyrinth's official plot of Eggman fucking replaced Sonic's shoes while he was asleep. <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a weird game. <laughs> that was a let's make a Sonic game, but he can't jump. Or even make a Sonic play. game, but he just sort of walks it. Like I'm uh, I'm in no rush. <laughs> Saunter. That's like the most Sonic talking. thing imaginable. <laughs> So I'm on, uh, gotta take my time. For those of us uh, who are watch who care, and none of you should, I am on level, I guess technically two, but really level three since you know the first one's level zero of Hotline Two. I got the um, uh, special intro where um, uh, the rooster just asks, "Why are you here? You all know that this ends very badly for everyone. <laughs> you can't change the story." I do love that this game is about futility to the point where they literally just have a, um, a new game plus cutscene asking you why you're bothering. <laughs> <laughs> you know this doesn't change. Yeah, no, the world won't change. All it does is turn. 
future refused to change. Speaking of which, Chrono Cross suit. Yep, uh, uh, uh. I, can, uh, I can grab that and play Radical Dreamers and probably not play Chrono Cross again. <laughs> I am absolutely playing Chrono Cross again. It has been 20 years, my body is ready. Oh god, is that the next thing you're gonna stream? <laughs> I mean, it could be. I feel it's like got the speed up options. More, though. Does it? I think it deserves significantly less, so I think it balances out. This was an okay game. It's just the soundtrack so good that everybody loves it. I feel like that's the best possible like reading of it. Uh, it is, it is an okay game that makes some questionable choices, but had a couple real bangers. And really, Ooh. isn't that the only thing we um uh, we we base our judgments of video games on, and nothing else? <laughs> Look, I, I, I will say this, and I'm not afraid to say this. I definitely enjoyed Chrono Cross more than Final Fantasy IX. And I, I did don't think like anybody... I feel like IX. I just heard a fucking space alien talk. <laughs> I didn't play Final Fantasy IX. I assume it's adequate. <laughs> uh, well, it's coherent, so it has that up on Chrono Cross. <laughs> Brutal. Prove me wrong, motherfucker. Damn. Guess what's getting That's three? There. Only one only one of those games has like entire dungeons where you go through that you go through where the question of why did I do that is well in another draft of the plot it made sense. <laughs> don't this like is uh, from Radical Dreamers. <laughs> don't like uh, isn't like it a big plot point that at one point uh, not Chrono, and the um, uh, the furry bad guy switch bodies. Oh yeah, so there's yeah, like yeah. two thirds of the game, and it's never used for anything of interest. Yeah, no, that is a huge disappointment. It's baffling. Like they they bring up the concept of like, oh, demi humans are discriminated against. You as a demi human, you in a demi human's body are never meaningfully discriminated against. Uh, once when you return to your home village, everyone's kind of a dick to you. That's more because they know you as, like, an evil cat, man, though. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> I mean, like, it feels like less discrimination if also you participated in a genocide, or whatever the fuck it is he did. Oh, my God. Oh, the, the genocide plotline is beautifully... I made like, that shit up! Do you mean that's no, real? <laughs> no, no, Lynx didn't cause a genocide. There is a plotline where, true. like... There is a plotline where... You, like, go to this, like, fairy place, and these dwarves come in with their fucking, like, tanks belching out, like, horrible polluting smoke and screaming about how, like, humans cause pollution, and that's why they have to genocide all these fairies. Yes. What? Well, because they, yep. they, they're... Natural. I know there was a fairy um, uh, party member. I never got to her in the game, but, like, the game gave me um, uh, her, like, as the intro uh, character. Yeah, a it's the third intro months. character, because there's, like, a dozen of those. Yeah, no, the, but the what were you going to say, Goggle Is because nature is shrinking that there's only so much room for dwarves or fairies, and so the dwarves are going to proactively take over the fairies' land. Swamp. You watch them, like, take committing this genocide while they scream at you that them doing this genocide is your fault. And also, Look at what you made me do. That leads to the whole Razzly <laughs> thing, which, that's the name of that fairy. To get now. her level 7 tech, you have to watch them all die. <laughs> yes. Wait, seriously? Yes. Is, like, she into that or something? I don't think it's an end to that thing. Like, like most of the characters in Chrono Cross, Razzly is not really developed enough to be into anything. She has an Fair accent. <laughs> I feel like family. text. I love is... when I love how sometimes the accent is it isn't even like something that would be detectable. It's just like this. We like one of the characters. I think it's Zoa, whose accent is speaks in all caps. So I guess. Beat has an accent. <laughs> I mean, I mean, they actually just—I actually answered a Twitter question to that today. They said, I mean, "What's your accent?" And my answer was loud. <laughs> my assumption was always that just Zoa was shouting at all times. Like I assume he's shouting at all times. It's extremely strange. <laughs> and there's the one that answers in cha, 
And oh, God, sentence. there's several Chas. That's the problem. Yeah, there's an the entire Cha, cha family. Corcha. Corcha, Orcha, Matcha. And the, the chef is a secret Cha, I think. Yeah, he is. He'd be a secret Cha. <laughs> Corcha is one of the most brutally unappealing character designs I've ever seen in a video game. It's uh... I, I, I must be, I don't know who it is off the top of my head, so I, my brain is just auto-correcting that to the weird, um, uh, the weird dog thing. Your actual girlfriend, instead of the girl who becomes your girlfriend. Push oh, the, um, Pushul. Pushul. Pushul, yeah. yeah Pushul that sucks, thing. but I'm going to show you Korcha, and you're going to understand <laughs> what I mean by just brutally unappealing. I mean, um, when you describe something as brutally unappealing, I believe you. You don't got to, like, convince me. No. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna click this shit. I'm gonna click it. I'm gonna click the hell out of it. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Who let an 11 year old into the, um, uh, the BDSM club? What the hell? It sucks <laughs> like, so much. I feel like somebody should have to go to jail for that. It sucks. There's like an. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's like an entire, like family of these people and the only way to avoid getting this kid in your party is to like see that you're like oh, not so you have girlfriend. to like go out of your way to not have him that's oppressive yeah to not have him in your party you have to when your not girlfriend gets poisoned by your fucking like cat dad i was i was i was certain cat dad. by your actual girlfriend <laughs> no no by your cat dad you have to say well nothing i can do and leave Wait, and wait, the like, cat's your dad? You get like Yes, the cat days. is your dad. And wait, so that, clarify means, something? that means so that means Serge was a cat boy all along? <laughs> it's more complicated than stupid. Clarify, when you that. say that not girlfriend, <laughs> there is a character in, that joins your party that is the alternate reality version of your girlfriend in the game. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, I I was aware of that. I did okay, so... um, uh, read a strategy guide and it was like so. So the like obvious like um, uh, lady protagonist is going to try and join the party like eight times, but don't let her. <laughs> you have to say no as often as possible. But uh, yeah, let, me, just, let me. Every time, every time should, you feel like you should be nice, resist the urge. <laughs> so so B, let me let me explain Cat Dad for a second. All right, so. I uh, I'm going to have to briefly explain uh, one of the dumbest plots imaginable. Okay, so uh, there is a big computer okay, the built big computer. around the shard of a big bug. Hold on, I gotta find. Earth. I gotta find the quote. I gotta find the quote. <laughs> it's built around the shard of a big bug that landed on Earth like a bazillion years ago, and it, it's like, oh man, this sucks. I can't do anything with this big shard of bug. Can't find it. Where is it? <laughs> so, uh, but basically, it can't. It, it has to watch over this big shard bug, and for some reason, the only one who's allowed to open the door to the big shard bug is Agnes. For some reason, I forget. The answer is not very well described. Okay, wait. Funny. No, I can tell you why. Okay. Oh God. So, why? some time ago, the protagonist was a kid and the kid was attacked by a by a poisonous, poisonous panther <laughs> not Wait. just a regular panther a poison panther <laughs> so he was attacked by a poison panther and his dad and his girl future girlfriend's dad are like whoa we gotta save this kid so they set out on a boat now it is a stormy night so, unfortunately, the boat runs aground in Magical Future Town. And Muji Magical Future Town, at precisely that moment, thanks to the storm, is normally protected from invaders, but there was a power outage, and, like, their power battery went out. So, during the, like, five minutes that the power battery went out, the shard of a bug freaked out, or at least the system that keeps track of the shard of the bug, and it reached out to the nearest life form it could find, which was your main character. Okay. Uh, yeah, that was the explanation. It's extremely dumb. Uh, but mm -hmm. yes, yeah, so try, so... <laughs> God, we're like even going oh, wait, I found this. it. I found it when you were talking about the computer. Exterior okay. shots. The computer planet. Day. Goku and Vegeta stand on firm, oh. rocky grounds, <laughs> good to get fear and awe of the sexy computer who hovers in the air like a menacing bird of prey, hard, light access, hard drive access lights flashing throughout. 
Goku, loosening gi belt. Oh fuck, the computer had coveted. it. Without averting his gaze from the sexy computer, Vegeta outstretches his arm across Super... I'm writing this. I'm reading an edit of this, but I know what it originally said. Across Goku's chest, barring his path. Vegeta, through tears, this time, Kakarot, this time I'll fuck the computer and covet it. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm going to call bullshit on that story because there's no way Goku would volunteer to have sex. <laughs> <laughs> he would not even be fully aware of what the concept involved. Goku has had sex, but he wasn't sure what it was. <laughs> yeah, he would not understand what you were referring to if you said it. He wasn't against it. It wasn't like non-consensual or anything, but he he's like, wow, this is what different. it was by name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, like, he wasn't yeah. against it. It wasn't like rape, but, you know... <laughs> You must you know. Uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, so, go, so going ahead further, I need to finish out this dumbass plot. So yeah, like, uh, <laughs> God. Uh, yeah. So, ch child is poison. Parent gets turned into the only thing that uh, can open the door to Bud Shard. The Chrono oh, Trigger. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, the assassin of time, the Chrono Trigger. That phrase doesn't mean anything in the final game. It was supposed to mean something, but it didn't. Uh, but it makes for a really great cutscene, like, 25% of the way through. I mean, it's not really great, because it doesn't really go anywhere, and it also seems you like You don't know that at the time! <laughs> Listen, that makes so it extremely like disappointing. You get, like, a lot of mileage out of saying something that sounds poignant and meaningful, even if it doesn't. I mean, Lots, even as a uh, child, I felt cheated that that never went anywhere. Oh yeah, no, no. As well, but, like in the moments, it's it's not something that lasts, and the feeling in of getting cheated case. can't override it. But the it, moment, sometimes taken on its own, can be worth well, not not nothing. Well, it, it's not it's not a good moment though, because like it's a moment that's basically writing a check, saying eventually this moment will have retroactively been really cool. And then you find out that, like, actually their bank account is closed. But in any case, uh, so uh, fucking child is the only one that can open the way to space bud shard. Uh, so fucking so fucking dumb. I love how exasperated you sound by this whole concept. <laughs> so basically, uh, <laughs> we run into an issue later on. Where essentially the computer keeps the dad. It's like, ah, oh, it's just mine, it's mine now. <laughs> and then it's like, huh, but I can't open the way to the bug that I'm guard that I'm like guarding over unless I unless the kid's here. I need to get the kid here. I will send his dad to do it. But first, I'm gonna mutate him into a big cat man. Oh, so he wasn't always a big cat man. Correct. Yeah, he was mutated into a big cat man. Because the child is afraid of cats because of being attacked by a, poison a poisonous panther. panther. So, like, Deptford made a very good uh, post about this on TT 2.0 back in the day, where he's just, like, pointing out uh, even, like, the, the one agent that this computer has to of its will is this child's dad, who he, you know, he loves. He loves his dad. And that's like, but I'm going to turn him into something that this child fears more than anything else and then send him to try to get the child to open the door. That sounds, that sounds logical, yeah. I could see no problem with this plan. <laughs> the computer that is supposed to be the smartest thing in the universe is not very smart. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like... Every time, like, somebody is like, ah, oh, the computer's the smartest thing in the world. First, first of all, that's lazy writing. Saying, ah, oh, you're so smart, you couldn't even try anything because nothing will work. That shit's boring. <laughs> uh, secondly, is... secondly, computers aren't smart. Computers are dumb as shit. Like, that Roko's Basilisk thing? <laughs> <laughs> Only a fucking idiot would come up with that. And the computer apparently is destined to come up with it if you think about it too hard. <laughs> I love the like, look at me tricking a fucking computer. It's uh, feeding up the creative character version of me forever. Like, nice job, dumbass. <laughs> I just love the the like 
everything about that is nonsense. Also, the fact that he's your dad only comes up after he dies. Yeah, it was just kind of like, hey, did you know this? It's like a, did you know about your life? Did you know you killed your dad? That's exactly what happened. It looked like your dad, but your but character is you. totally impassive in all ways, so there's never even, and none of the other characters are characters because they can't actually be characters or else the game would have to guarantee they were in the party. So no one reacts to this. <laughs> Including Lena, whose dad you actually kill earlier. <laughs> oh yeah, you you kill you can bring her to kill her dad. Uh, I don't think you can actually. I think that's part of the game where she's not part of your party. I could have sworn you could have her right as she. Oh, or is it right after you switch to Lynx in the like three seconds before everyone's like, oh, you're the same person, so yes, I'll follow you. Yes, exactly. Again. Yeah, if memory serves, you could not bring her to kill her dad. I'll have to try that but next you, time. You never actively, like, yo, by the way. <laughs> by the way, I absolutely killed her. Hey, remember that time I killed your dad? No? It was pretty cool. Eddie, you want to make out? <laughs> oh, she's one of the, um, uh, she's one of the romantic interests? I mean... The game doesn't have a plot coherent enough to have a proper romantic arc. But theoretically, he starts the game with a girlfriend and then nothing ever really changes that. Yeah, but then also the plot of the game is also reliant on the concept that at some point, like, the, the lady that disappeared in Chrono Trigger, Shala, heard him from outside of time and was so crying and was so, like, emotionally destroyed by this act that it caused her to do something. I can't remember that's what. That's why he's the crow. She's the one that opened up Shala, the... Yeah, the yeah, she's the one that... Oh, yeah, it's that shit. And it's like, <laughs> why? <laughs> I mean, she was just having a bad day, ultimately. She became part of a giant space bug and was not fond of it, and this was... But she was outside of time. She probably heard a lot of crying. <laughs> well, that was the thing. That one she distinctly heard. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> When and not in the good time, way of not making point, sense. She did. Remember when the big city made out of dragons that's also maybe a computer fights the big city that's just a computer? <laughs> um, is this all in the game? Because at this point I'm half yes. convinced I'm making shit up. <laughs> yeah. No, that's real. And you have to kick the aliens crash spacecraft to get to the city that's made of dragons. Yeah, I forgot Starkey is a requirement. <laughs> like, at that, after a certain point, Chrono Cross sort of runs out of ways to force narrative momentum because it has a protagonist that has no... Uh, it has is not allowed to have, like, any sort of arc. And it doesn't have any characters that can guarantee you well enough to have an arc. So instead, it just starts shoving characters into your party to be like, well, this person has a reason to go somewhere. <laughs> and can we talk about Guile? Because goddamn, do I want to talk about Guile. <laughs> sure, oh, let's do it. Fighter? No. Uh, okay. So there's Guile, a.k.a. Alf. Alf, Magil. Yeah. Hey, Screaming Red Skull's here. Hey, Screaming Red Skull. So Guile was obviously at some point intended to be Magus from Chrono Trigger. To the point where in the Chrono Trigger DS... We, well, well uh, that, that, like, we're getting there. He was okay. obviously intended to be Magus, but they also theoretically drew back at some point during Chrono Cross because they never... There's a lot of, oh, maybe he could be Magus, but there is never a verification at any point in there. Like... They yeah. Do, they do not. Which is a him. problem because he's the one that should care the most about this plot. Right. Which he's the one who should be rescuing Shala. Ultimately, it's like his entire reason for living. There but, are only three, and there is like there are two other characters you might recruit instead of him. Yes. Yeah. It's entirely possible he ne literally never joins your party. But so there's the connection between him and Magus, but it looks like they pulled back. But then later they made Chrono Trigger DS. And Chrono Trigger DS distinctly ends with Magus, the for real Magus, 
losing his memory and being like, well, I'm going to become Guile. <laughs> and it's like, uh, okay. <laughs> like, I mean, Except I understand the impetus to attempt that, but also, like, that's not really... That's, that doesn't fix anything. No, it, it is <laughs> like, okay, so he was... Guile was Magus, but then that means he accomplished his goal without remembering he was trying to do it? Like, that is the implication, I guess? So, it also anyway. just seems weird that Shala didn't care about what happened to her brother. Yes. But then it's, again, it's she a was very... at all points in time, so maybe she found out he made out okay. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, that game's kind of a mess. And also, mm -hmm. like, I guess this could be a side effect of the fact that there was never, so to speak, a third Chrono Trigger. But for the game that ends in an attempt to wrap up a plot point from Chrono Trigger, it absolutely does not do that. Because it, <laughs> it tells you what happened to Shala. It tells you what, like, that she is then freed. But the implications of her being freed is like completely ambiguous. Now she can walk around Tokyo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was it. She's they, brought they, the world. It, she winds up in the same world as Sora from the end of Chrono Trigger or Kingdom Hearts 3. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, oh, like where you fight the boss. I'm aware of that at least. <laughs> yeah, that's where you fight Yozada from. <laughs> Vera, from uh, very from right. a game that does not exist, but Fantasy apparently Rex played. Versus. Yeah, it's like a homage to the Versus 13 version of the 15. Uh, yeah, it's it's just truly. See, Kirby like... has gun has obtained gun now. <laughs> I have also obtained gun. Oh, I lost it. <laughs> Score one for Kirby. Yeah, I can't believe Kirby's Kirby's about beating me in that regard. Huh, I think I just discovered a glitch I've never seen before. Apparently you can tank like 14 bullets if you're um, uh, do, doing an execution animation. I guess you're... Are you supposed to be invincible during an execution animation? Uh, uh, typically no. Typically no, but this time I could. Maybe he was. Maybe they were all just misses, but they were like at point blank. So that's kind of unusual. But yeah, no. I. I mean, I could literally talk all day about the various why did this happens of Chrono Cross. Which yeah, maybe we should stream that. <laughs> yep. It does seem like something we've got a lot to say about. I mean, God, you just get a Lucia or Grob. Not me. I never paid less the first disc. Grob it. Beat eighty percent of the game is on the first disc. Grab I it. never got like past. I never got like past the first dungeon. Uh, it has dungeons, right? Better. Also, Grobic sucks. Also, remember that point where they just watch you watch show you fucking Robo's brain getting deleted? <laughs> yeah, out of fucking nowhere. <laughs> just they to tell you, to Robo. Robo is the good boy. Everybody likes Robo. They're like, yeah, and you watch hey, his brain get deleted. Hey, we built Robo <laughs> into so a machine, and you're like, great. And it's like, well, he's dead now. <laughs> God, I had forgotten about that. Yeah, everybody you know and love from Chrono Trigger, they're all dead. <laughs> I mean, technically, <laughs> I mean, I I like if they all, like, you know, if it was, like, a hundred years later, people die eventually, but, like... It's been 20 years. So you find out that it, all like, of them died horribly and unnaturally. Well, that seems needlessly cruel. Oh, yeah, that was the other it's... thing that happened in Chrono Trigger DS. They firmly confirmed that the reason Poor becomes a important place is because Dalton, of all fucking idiots... God, fucking Dalton. Dalton, the guy who's known for fucking burping at the end of a fight, is the guy who killed everybody in Chrono Trigger. Somehow. It's a... Uh... It was a choice, man. <laughs> I think a lot about what Masato got to is been up to since uh, Chrono Cross, and it's like, oh... All these stories suck, too. <laughs> Remember the the reboot Ninja Gaiden 3? No. No. 
So that he wrote that really? for some reason. And that game has uh, one of my favorite what the fuck were you thinking in terms of writing, which is the through like at the every so often in that game in its initial release, they actually cut these sections out of the re the Razor's Edge re-release because they sucked so bad. <laughs> but basically, every so often while you're doing, uh, you will run into like one soldier at the end of a fight who's just like standing there begging for his life, and the game won't let you do anything other than stab him in the head. <laughs> that seems really mean, and I don't want to do that. Yeah, it and seems I, like it's it's. I can't tell what purpose was meant by it. Is it supposed to be like a what? Look what you're doing! And it's like motherfucker, you wouldn't let me do anything else. <laughs> but you're so it's, bad. <laughs> it's and it's a fucking Ninja Gaiden game. Yeah. Yes. I feel like I feel like the um, uh, the eventual like. Um, uh, Cruelty that led us to The Last of Us uh, Part Two was in the works for much longer than that. Oh yeah, no, like realized. there was there was a long period where games were like, "Look what you did," and it's like, "All you, yeah, it's did. like only the only thing I did is the only thing your mechanics would let me do." <laughs> Press A to yeah. go to do this. Oh my God, you did it. It's like, uh, I believe Zara was actually the one who gave us the concept of a sadlet, uh, and. God, like, somebody should have just told Neil Druckmann what the internet was doing, like, in 2009, because he would have <laughs> would have blown his fucking mind. <laughs> Man, he was busy making his employees stay overtime to make horrible Last of Us versions of reaction gifts. <laughs> oh, God. Anybody who does that shit should, like, uh, be banned from calling their work art. <laughs> like, no, it's still art. I'm not gonna, like, budge on that, because any, like, creative work designed to elicit emotion is art, by definition, but also, bro, you're not, like, fucking Schindler's List if you're fucking, like, making reaction gifts. <laughs> <laughs> they were really horribly uncanny valley, too. It was really upsetting. <laughs> oh, yeah, they were ugly. They were ugly as sin. Uh, All right, here we go. Pig Butcher time. Ah, oh, damn it. Shotgun from off screen. So I come to me to die. You, and you, and you! Oh, masked hammer. Kirby is gone all... What's the word I'm looking for? Fury Road on this. I just want to say Hollywood Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't wear a mask during that. I think Hogan's masked uh, persona was Mr. America. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, Mr. Oh. America. <laughs> it was. Super I mean, it's 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 what happens when you have a face lose a loser leaves town match. <laughs> I was always more of a Macho Man fan, and I'm glad that history has proven that I was correct. Oh yeah, no, he was always oh, yeah. a better wrestler, he was always the more charismatic uh, speaker, he was always, yeah. Also, he apparently had a soul, which, you know, goes a long way. Yeah. I mean, he was fucked up in the same way that all wrestlers from the 80s were fucked up as shit, but, you know. Oh yeah, no, you can't be a wrestler in the 80s and not be an absolute goddamn mess. <laughs> but, like, a soul is a low bar to clear, I think. <laughs> And, uh, but you know, it's good when it's clear. How about a Slim Jim? <laughs> Not gonna let it be clear. You ever think about Macho Man's, uh, rap album? <laughs> no, I don't. I can honestly say I never have. <laughs> Please go listen to Perfect Friend, whose tribute to Mr. Perfect, Kurt Hennig. Perfect Friend. Good old my perfect. Which one's the um, uh, which one's the guy who like became a motivational speaker, which is which is typically code for weird grifter, and was also incredibly homophobic. I think you're thinking of the Ultimate Warrior. That's the one. That's the <laughs> one. Yeah. Who? Uh, yeah. He, most he of mostly... my knowledge of the Ultimate Warrior comes from uh, comes from from Zen doing a strip about him, which got ed edited into a drill pencils. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the Ultimate the Warrior. Movie, the the movie. Ultimate Warrior sucked. He was a piece of shit to work with, and uh, he was also just like a 
bad. Like he was a bad wrestler and a bad person. <laughs> yep. Hello. That's from Red Skull. Hey, I'm in here now because you guys don't pay attention to your chat. That's true. We're <laughs> too busy discussing perfect friends. <laughs> <laughs> That, and that's that was some interesting stuff, but damn, you guys suck at streaming. Yeah, we know. I didn't come here to be good at streaming. Or would you okay, say that we're as even worse? Uh, as, uh, as long as you acknowledge it, then I don't feel bad for saying it. <laughs> How do you think we could be better at streaming? We can follow just our look, chat. Just look at your chat. Just do it. I like how you're like, uh, this try is the to absolute talk to bare you. minimum. This is bare minimum, yeah. So if there I, wasn't, I, like, I, six of you, I would say maybe someone have a camera, but that's not important. <laughs> I, I have that. no desire and for my face. Last week we tried to have a camera, it didn't work out. The only, the only... I didn't actually know that my laptop just had, like, a weird dot on the top. I just assumed it was a web <laughs> camera. goes here. <laughs> yeah. Typically where a camera goes, it looked like where a camera would logically go. The idea that there wasn't a camera there was actually surprising to me. You know what? I, I, I'm with you on that. <laughs> I was going to say, the only benefit a camera would have for you guys is that you'd be able to tell which person specifically is running the stream. That is Because otherwise it's just a bunch of voices. I, yeah. I feel like That's... we should all share a VTuber and, like, absolutely That's not change That sounds horrible. Anything. Yes, all of us will be the exact same VTuber. <laughs> and that VTuber will be... Sonic the Hedgehog! <laughs> oh, no. Sonic oh, already no. does that! Exactly! Do they, that means they can't stop they us. They do. There yes. is a Sonic the Hedgehog VTuber. <laughs> yeah, the there story? is. There is also a Tails one. A fully rigged Sonic model. <laughs> oh god. One that doesn't even that work like properly, so like it doesn't track right, and the arms just flip out, and the eyes are just doing whatever. I mean, the that is Sonic. The worst VTuber ever. <laughs> yes. You guys are onto something here. <laughs> You are my perfect friend, right there until the end. Mr. Perfect, you know that you'll be truly new. So yeah, mouthful mode is terrible. I disagree. It no, it's 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 horrible. It looks horrifying. It looks really oh, bad. I don't like yeah. the idea. I don't like the idea. I, yeah. That uh, Kirby has like things that. Can't swallow like the idea of him like eating an entire I don't know fucking like I don't think uh, that it's I don't think that it's he's not able to swallow it I think he's choosing not to <clears throat> yeah okay that's yeah, that's bad like on its face the but Lord like it also um, uh, it also raises the question the but there is stuff that Kirby could just sort of wrap himself around that that means that we are forced to consider what is inside Kirby and nothing. we should never ever have to raise that question <laughs> I mean there was already a game where the entire mechanic uh, was built around what is in Kirby's stomach at any given moment. That was the gimmick of Sweet Spot. Oh, yeah, hey, Sweet Spot. That. But that was Mass, yeah. or mass Attack. Mass Attack was, uh, you have ten Kirby's. <laughs> that one was a lot of fun. How many Kirby's one. could there be was the question. Sweet Squad was the one with, like, the, the stomach power-ups that weren't very useful. That you tapped on, like it was Super Mario Brothers 3, basically. Mm, okay, my, my knowledge of Squeaks... I, I played all the way through Squeak Squad, and then, like, some of the kids... It was made by, like, Capcom school, for uh, were at my... Huh? It was made by, like, Capcom for some reason. Okay, weird. Um, but no, some of the kids in my Take One to School were at, um, uh, my ha at my folks' house for some reason, and they saw the game sitting and were like, Kirby! And I was like, here, go ahead, borrow it. And they never gave it back, and I wasn't really bothered by it. <laughs> it's a very, it's it's about as mediocre as a Kirby game, though. Yeah, it was very easy, even by Kirby game standards. The Kirby games are super easy. The um, uh, But I 100%ed it, which is to say I got every, like, secret treasure at every level on the first try for every level. That was, that was a bit surprising to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that the, was definitely the, a game you could do that in. And then you got the ghost ability, which has not been seen again, I think. I don't think I've ever seen that in another game. No. The Kirby game on 64 was the only one I've ever played. Oh, uh, Crystal Shards, that's a pretty good one. Which, that was the last time Kirby went to a world that was kind of like Earth, only it was destroyed. 
<laughs> oh yeah, Shiver Star. I was gonna say it's weird that he's done it twice. <laughs> There's a lot of, uh, there's, there's a surprising number of Nintendo franchises where the background plot is, and then the entire Earth was destroyed. Yeah, Pikmin, Splatoon... Kirby. Kirby. Three yeah, of them is already a, a surprising I story say, yeah. writing. I mean, I'm surprised they did it with Splatoon because they made it so obvious with Splatoon that it was just kind of like, okay. Splatoon. You were expecting something different at that point. <laughs> Like, what's your explanation for Squid Kids? Well, the world was destroyed. <laughs> Eventually, squid, squids find a way. <laughs> yes, they do. God, these snakes are uh, You're unique. getting slightly less fucked up by snakes this time. <laughs> snakes are the natural enemies of hammers. <laughs> I don't feel like that tracks. <laughs> nope, it, it makes it's like paper I, rock. Kind of I thing. don't either, but I'm not gonna argue with it. Have you ever played you Whack and Snake on the Birdwalk? It makes perfect sense. No, what? <laughs> nope, don't just keep like saying things. <laughs> Mr. Perfect, don't you know that you'll be truly me? You got eaten by that snake. <laughs> Thank you. This is now a Vore enthusiast stream. <laughs> oh god. Oh wow, there's like a thunderstorm coming here where I am and I can hear it outside and it's scary. This is how everyone can go. Oh, I had some crazy <sighs> wind where I'm at this morning. Why is this big ape man throwing pine cones at you? <laughs> I believe they be. are Dorants. Are they? Like no. Dorians? <laughs> Whatever. Dorians, yeah. Dorans. <laughs> Picture of Dorian like... Gray. <laughs> that sounds like a race in uh, Star Trek. <laughs> Doran. Continue. Dorans Captain, only showed up. Doran like... ships uh, closing in on us. They showed up in TNG season one and then everyone stopped. Showing them out of embarrassment. <laughs> Has anyone caught any of the They're a little Star too Trek much like stuff? that group of people. You know the Yes, one. actually. I've not caught any of it, even though there's so much of it now. I think yeah, it's like there's a me. lot. Uh -huh. Like, I'm not, not used to there being a lot. It's been a long time since there's been a lot of Star Trek. That's the thing. Like, I was really into it when I was a teenager. <laughs> Which I'm pretty sure was like somewhere around the Mesozoic era. I mean, I was talking about UPN shows on Talking Time the other day, and oh my god. Someone asked what UPN was? <laughs> no, nobody <laughs> asked, which makes it even sadder. It's today, you don't know. But I was talking about my that was Shadow. Ashton McNasty. Which, did anybody read my post about seven days on Talking Time? I have not mm, seen that yet. Okay, cause I don't think I've seen it. Seven Days, if you've never heard of it, was a TV show oh, yeah. where a character who was kind of a meathead had a time machine that he could go back in time seven days and, like, on a weekly basis there was basically some crazy catastrophe. You not just keep put, putting him back in the same time? What? He could only go back seven days, so... I'm talking about... I just hated this. Huh? Your stream, the frame rate is just... Eating shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I so said that like an hour ago. ago. I know. Toward I read it. I just didn't. You will not get satisfaction here. Despite you. <laughs> but anyway, so seven days time machine. So I, now, fun fact, not fun at all. But you know, it's a time machine show. They had to have a mad scientist. At the start of the third season, in real life, the actor who played the mad scientist was diagnosed with cancer. Oh, and damn. was like, I can't do the show anymore, I'm sorry, please write my character off. And, you know, I, I won't be able to do this anymore. So, like, a lot of other shows would, like, you know, have them do, like, a noble sacrifice or something like that. Oh, no. Like, but what Seven Days decided they would do, because I believe the official word is they really liked the actor and they wanted them to have a happy ending and because he wasn't getting one in real life the scientist character 
wins an entire tropical island in a poker game, gets drunk, and marries one of two women, but he doesn't know who he married and he's afraid to ask. So the official reason he's not huh? around for third season, and which was the end of the, the series, is because he had to retire to his own private island to figure out who he married. I mean, I mean, I'm sure there's like you know context clues you can pick up on. There's got to be like you know. They made an excellent point of the fact that like he's a scientist and he can't figure it out. <laughs> I mean, it has to do like a couple like. Oh man! Like, when are we getting, we're getting like your thrilling dissertation? When are we getting your thrilling dissertation on homeboys from outer space? <laughs> Right after I'm done with Shasta McNasty. <laughs> oh my yes. god. Oh my god. I haven't heard somebody else say that name in so long. Oh, <laughs> you god. Say it to yourself Remember often? when they some No, but it it was... just, it's just a name that pops up in my head once in a while. I'm like, man, what was that show even? I you love know, that, like halfway through they decided that the problem was that it was called Shasta McNasty and their solution was to just drop McNasty. Did anybody actually watch the show because it was basically Entourage no. before Entourage? I think I watched 30 minutes, uh, seconds of it. Like the concept was literally ahead of its time. Like the whole concept was like basically What was it? Entourage. But how do you feel What's about the concept the of Entourage? Boy, I'm a Mark Wahlberg sir has some weird friends. <laughs> That's basically the concept it, of yes. entourage is we we have agreed to like ignore the fact that Mark Wahlberg's a white supremacist. I don't. Is he still a white supremacist? I, I don't know, know, but I don't know, but we all have agreed to ignore that time that he committed a hate crime. We have agreed I'm to. Not. to... <laughs> Society yeah, has agreed to this. I have Society agreed. Can... Agreed to all the society sucks, that but do. society has made that choice. Fuck Mark Wahlberg. Mm. Marky Mark and the Wahlberg. fuck you bunch. <laughs> I think I have that for Sega CD. <laughs> God, that make my video. <laughs> God, I love everything about those games. I feel like the funniest one is still Power Factory, featuring CNC Music Factory. <laughs> well, Both yeah, because naming a, naming a CNC Music Factory song is impossible. <laughs> and also, that was the point where they just, like, gave up on pretending that the gameplay made any sense. So it's all just like, yeah, this guy wants you to put, like, teeth in the video. You're just going to have to do that. <laughs> I don't understand it either. I mean, my favorite part <laughs> of the game... Look, if, like, CNC Music Factory called me up and said, PUT GODDAMN TEETH IN MY VIDEO! <laughs> I would be like, Hey, you're the boss, paying me. My I know, I know who signs my check. that they were using all public domain video nonsense, so Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech was almost always an option to put into your music video. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's It cool. seems like maybe that was a weird choice. <laughs> It wasn't not a weird choice. <laughs> yeah. Like, what says, what can make you more excited to listen to NXS than footage of Martin Luther King Jr.? I can't think of anything. <laughs> I can't think of anything that would make me want to listen Every to Every time I'm listening to any song at all, I immediately go, man, this would be great if I was watching the Martin Luther King Jr. I have a dream speech. <laughs> Do you think that when you're listening to the wrapped in black uh, song from... Absolutely. And that's not even Martin Luther King, that's Malcolm X. I know, but that was the joke. <laughs> that's super not Martin Luther King. <laughs> too black, too strong. Wrapped in black and black and black. Wrapped in black. <laughs> and now we've been demonetized. I just beat the um, uh, first um, uh, Evan level in um, uh, Hotline 2, and I love that one because in the um, uh, on second floor, you can literally just not attack anybody at all. That one doesn't kill people, but you can just walk past them all, just make a beeline and try not to get shot to the um, uh, end. And the, guy, and the guy will just like end the level for you because, you know, you just wanted to talk to him. You didn't want to kill anybody. <laughs> You get a terrible score for doing so, and every le enemy in the entire level will just be sort of like awkwardly waiting outside, pointing machine guns at you while you talk to their boss. 
Just shuffling around, wondering what happened. <laughs> what do we do? What do we do? You know, like, I mean... Didn't have a plan at this point. Boss is having a conversation with him, so I guess we don't shoot, but that would be ready to shoot. Wrapped in black and black and black, wrapped in black. Okay, so one complaint I have about this game, and I hope it's not spoiling it for anybody or whatever, but... This is a game that the boss fights and, like, the individual fights are not as interesting as in other Kirby games. Like... Kirby games aren't known for having incredible boss fights, right? Yeah, no, I mean, like, legitimately, like, even going back to as early as Superstar, like, some of them are, like, very different fights depending on your moves. Like, a lot of the abilities in this game are very similar to each other, so it doesn't seem like there's that kind of thing, but they still find an excuse for you to fight the same bosses, mini-bosses, and individual characters, like, a bazillion times, and it gets tiresome. <laughs> like, there's an arena mode, there's the bosses, there is a rematch with the bosses, there are challenges where you fight the bosses. <laughs> They weren't that interesting the first time. I'm sorry. Hmm. Apologize to Kirby. <laughs> I feel like Kyle Kirby should apologize to me. Kirby does not understand the concept of having wronged you. Yeah. <laughs> Kirby's I just a baby. Doubt that. He's, he's a baby sentient cream puff. As I mentioned in my head canon recently, my belief is that Kirby absolutely absorbs memories when he gets abilities. And that broke his brain almost immediately, so that's why he's basically a toddler. I don't like that idea. I don't like it either. I just like that greatly. <laughs> Please take this back. Nope. It's a bad head canon. Please unhave this concept. <laughs> we are all we are all <laughs> very we are all he very upset has... with you. You need to uh, you need to you need to hit the undo button on and this whole. And that's why Meta Knight just that. uses a sword and has a mask because he knows he can absorb abilities. But if he does, it will turn him basically into a toddler. I was Fuck. going to say it's because he you. has a. I, I was going to say it's because he believes murder is wrong. <laughs> nope. Curry just has a bunch of memories of random animals in the woods doing animal things like pissing on a tree. <laughs> Yeah. Like, those are the, the good idea memories. Of like, he absorbs some random Waddle Dee that can use a sword and yeah. remembers years of training and, like, a dad that he never knew that is, like, telling him he's never going to accomplish anything and just Kirby could not deal with it. That's why now he's just a toddler who likes tomatoes. <laughs> I think that, like, thinking hard about Kirby is antithetical to the very idea of Kirby. I cannot disagree with that. Black. Black. Pretty sure Alex and Ash. Okay, the entire idea of like the um, uh, the downside to using Alex and Ash is that your hitbox is twice as big because you're playing as two people, and if one of them dies, both surrender. But I'm reasonably certain uh, Alex or Ash rather doesn't even have a hitbox. <laughs> I've seen bullets just pass right through him so many times. Well, that's convenient. Yeah. It's all upside, baby. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's crazy hard to aim with him because, you know, it follows like two feet behind. Everything's coming up, beat house. It's like a gradius option. Also, if anyone's curious, in an effort to not spoil this game for anybody, I've been just doing the challenge modes. Yeah, I've noticed that these are all just challenge levels. <laughs> As opposed to ruining the complex plot of King DDD is at it again. <laughs> I mean, you're allowed to, like, Kirby assumes the levels. Anyway. I was just sort of assuming you were going to do that. Kirby assumes DDD's up to something anyway. <laughs> It's I believe the plot of Squeak Squad is that like um uh, is that um uh, is that like Kirby just assumed DDD took his food because he didn't have his food and DDD wasn't currently dead. <laughs> Something like that. But he okay. should have been. I mean that is pretty much exactly it. DDD's like so how far I did into this before you fight this with time. 
DDD's like, Kirby, what the fuck? And Kirby's like, bitch. I know you're up to something. I don't need no proof. You see that? Do you see like a badge? Yeah, Kirby is not a due process kind of guy. <laughs> so how far into this before you fought with me was? Uh, second level. Good. That's too many levels. <laughs> Wispy Woods should be like the very first guy you fight. The entire really point is. of Wispy Woods is for Kirby to start his dominance over a tree. <laughs> Kirby, <laughs> met, Kirby learned about nature and he was like, nah, I'm not having that shit. <laughs> I'm not a fan. I believe it, Every it, time. In my mind, this is because Kirby does not like vegetables all that much. So, like, it, just anything. It's a fruit tree. Kirby yeah, doesn't fruit's know delicious. that. Evidently, you don't either. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong, but I'm just saying. So, like, it's dumber than Kirby, Goggle Bob. <laughs> Every time Kirby fights Whips, Wispy Woods, he should just go, <sighs> not again. I mean, also, I he once heard... fought Wispy Woods, except Wispy Woods was made out of rocks, so. Yes, yeah, Golem Woods. Is that the I Kirby like the Amazing the Deer one? Rocks. <laughs> I forget what game that's actually in. Amazing no, Mirror amazing sounds right because you're in like an alternate dimension during that. Yeah, Amazing Mirror's got our rock buddy. I like that. I just played through the first. Why, yes, it turns out you are a fucking psychopath in Hotline 2 level. I mean, there are a lot of those. That's all of the levels. But this, no, is, one of those that, this is the one that, like, drew a lot of attention to the fact. <laughs> Uh, the one specifically where the, um, uh, the fans go to rescue a girl, only to find that the girl was just hanging out with her friends, which they just slaughtered. <laughs> yeah. The fans. That's a, that's a pretty pointed, uh, you probably misunderstood the first game, didn't you, you motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, as ever, I do feel, when you have a game that glorifies violence through the action, it is hard to get the point across that violence maybe isn't great. I would say Hotline does a pretty apple. It yeah. works Hotline. out well, because what you're attempting to do in Hotline is questionable at best. To Hotline begin does it well, yeah. but I don't necessarily blame people who get it wrong. <laughs> no, that's fair. Hotline does it well, because uh, what Hotline does is say, it, it takes away like any sort of justification right from the start. You're not doing these things because you have some bold purpose submission to do them. You're doing them because your answering machine thought it would be cool. <laughs> I've always wanted to, like, who has done anything in their life to impress anything other than the answering machine? I mean, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Never once for me. I was trying to impress my toaster. I mean, that motherfucker's never going to be satisfied with anything, so I don't yeah, like, Well, you like said that's, it. That's a, that's, that's, a, that's a lost cause. Toast will never be happy. For a device that's made to get warm, they're awfully cold. Hey-oh. Yeah, so you get oh, there. Fucking toaster. Yeah. Toast. Also, I like the fact that the entire premise of this game is basically Kirby's operating in what is very much, even if he doesn't recognize it as Earth, somewhere where something went terribly wrong. And I feel like Operation. Kirby's the only Nintendo characters who would just be kind of like, this is fine. <laughs> I think that's also uh, implicitly the, um, uh, the setting of Splatoon. Yes. It is. It's explicitly the setting of Splatoon. But, but for Splatoon, like, that is, like, an entire society built on the back of a society. Built on world. the ruins of our um, once great world. Yeah, it'd be kind of like you or I... Kirby does not know what society is. ...concerned yeah. about, you know, any given civilization that's been before. I'm pretty sure that's also the case in Pikmin. This actually is a relatively it common is, yeah. Yes. No, and, um, uh, and, um, uh, Shiverstar... 
in uh, Kirby's Adventure 3. Yeah, we brought this up like Are we scooping yeah. on ourselves? Yeah, well, I wasn't here for that part. I was getting pizza or something. Oh, okay. Uh, give me the pizza. No, it's my pizza. Mm -hmm. Get your own pizza. Hey, I'm the like crazy some pizza later. chef. I cook the pizza. <laughs> Now that could be our VTuber, just a sentient pizza that just... That sounds awful. <laughs> sounds terrible, and I hate it. Let's do it. What part of the pizza talks? I would have to say it would have Whatever to be part is most Whatever part is most upsetting. <laughs> it just, it's just... It's every a, part. It's just a spot in the cheese like, that like expands some, open. Some, but I was gonna say that, like, the uh, there are, like, three bits of rigging that can open up to be a mouth that are all, like, chosen at random every frame. Oh, that's good. <laughs> oh, I'm upset already. Yeah. I don't like our fake pizza. <laughs> As you should. The last time some... so this is a weird kind of game where you're expected to like search the world map and by search I mean just kind of hover over things and hope something happens. Doesn't uh, fucking wild arms do that shit? Yeah, I think so. I mean, technically Skies of Arcadia does that a little bit too, but only for like discoveries. Which, in one case, is mandatory to continue, because... It kind of makes sense in Skies of Arcadia, because that's more... Well, yeah, because that's bit... because you are literally exploring this massive world. Yeah, yeah, so it's sort Why of can't I play Skies of Arcadia on everything? Because, um, uh, because we live in a brutally imperfect universe. I was going to yeah. say unjust, but also accurate. It, unjust, it, imperfection includes under its purview injustice. At the end of the day, you can just boil it down to everything sucks. <laughs> I know everything sucks. Yeah, I know everything sucks. Whoa, I know. I knew that was gonna happen, but I'm still a little bit mad about it. <laughs> Why do you expect it? <laughs> Wait, I don't know what I'm doing. Why it upset you though? Oh no, it did. Okay. Good. Like, certain things are just expected. <laughs> I enjoy water balloon curves he moves in a way that vaguely unsettles me. He undulates. <laughs> like, this is this what mouthful the mode is made for. Where's the sky of bang? I've the entire clip on that. On that street. A little sky of bang. There's something in me. Skateboard. Skateboards. Surf Dracula. I'm I'm like half convinced that Surf Dracula doesn't actually exist, therefore cannot hurt me. And Surf Dracula it's, uh, it's, it's like a fucking Doc Future tweet. That's all it is. <laughs> That's it? That's the one about the Netflix Almost thing, disappointed. right? Yeah, like, there's just a Doc Future tweet. Back in the day, if you did a TV show called Surf Dracula, you'd see that full surfing every week in New Adventures. But in the streaming era, the entire first season has got to be a long-ass flashback to how he got the surfboard until you finally get to see him surf for five minutes in the family. That's... Actually, true. It's and really it sucks. bad and true. <laughs> Bring back original Surf Dracula. <laughs> like back when, um, uh, back when Marvel Netflix was a thing, the thing that kept blowing my mind was these are based on comics, right? And half the point of comics, when they're like, you know, good and fun, is that you could just pick one up, any one up. And read it and be like, ah, they're on the moon fighting a dude, or ah, how's Batman gonna stop the Riddler, or whatever, right? You know? Somebody hasn't read comics in a while. <laughs> I know. I know. The point is, there's something to be said for that. You know, it's like not everything has purity to be a big events, right? There's a there's purity of purpose there, and like watching this Netflix, Marvel Netflix, uh, which now are Disney Plus shows. And that's kind of hilarious, like how Disney Plus shows are doing everything 
as differently as they can from the Netflix shows, but um, uh, but they're still like um, uh, referencing them all the time. <laughs> they like they like brought back fucking uh, kill uh, k- a kingpin. <laughs> and uh, Which, yeah, that version of Gary right. he's, he's an incredible yeah. actor, but like also. <laughs> Also, like, the tone is completely different. <laughs> like, literally, literally no connection at all. Yeah, well, the whole uh, concept of the Netflix Marvel movies was, like, that they, they were allowed to mention, like, Avengers 1 happened, but then they couldn't reference literally anything that happened after that. Oh, yeah. I think, I think Luke Cage and like, Season 2 came out after uh, Infinity War. And, like, it was just like, well, guess this happened in... earlier. <laughs> <laughs> and I loved how Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. had to, like, literally, like, break the space-time continuum just to, like, maintain its own con- continuity. <laughs> it's like, well, I had we- watched that one past the first episode. Basically, at one like point, they're like, that was wise. well, we can't <laughs> deal with what's happening in the quote-unquote real world. How about our characters are trapped in another dimension for a while? <laughs> or at one point, a virtual reality universe. <laughs> like, that way they can't deal with anything that's going on. Isn't that like, isn't that like how Optimus Prime died at least once? <laughs> I mean, he's died so many times, who knows? <laughs> Probably yes. Oh, wait, in the comics. Yeah, you are talking about something that happened. <laughs> wait, that is real. Yeah, that, that absolutely is real. I knew I wasn't making shit up. What always upsets me the most is when I make shit up, I always try to be super outlandish. Like, I'll just say the <laughs> dumbest thing that I can think of. Like genocide and then I'll be Chrono right. Cross. And then I'll be right. And I hate that. I hate it so fucking much. The one that will never, ever leave my mind is uh, Kino's Journey, obviously. Because Kino's Journey was a box on a plague, and I fucking hated that shit. <laughs> but uh, during one of, one of the episodes, I just said, oh, then the robots are going to walk into the sea and die after realizing they were robots all along. Like, just like as a stupid, like, one-line gag. The thing I like to say about robots. Do you know what happened at the end <laughs> of that episode? <laughs> they walked into the... The they walked into the sea upon realizing they were robots all along. Oh my god. <laughs> that was so bad. <laughs> I was also so honest. fucking pissed. God, these snakes kick my ass every time. That's How can good. a snake kick your ass? You'd be surprised. Or you wouldn't be. Probably won't be, no. I am pretty perceptive. Is it a kick or is it a whip? More like a, it just ate me. Snake whips ass, and that's a good thing, right? Because whipping ass is considered good these days. Uh, what? <laughs> I was kicked out of the divination convention for saying Nostra dumbass too many times. <laughs> Damn it. Should have brought an actual gun at this part of the level. Should have just tried to keep the skateboard. On a side note, one of the reasons I do not have kids is because I remember as a child, at one point, I saw a, probably like an episode of Unsolved Mysteries on Nostradamus, and I would say for a solid week, again, I was probably like seven tops at this point, but for an entire week, I was obsessed with the fact that Nostradamus had predicted the end of the world or something and this was really concerning to me and like as an adult i have no idea how i would deal with a child who like you have to explain no you don't have to worry about nostradamus right now <laughs> like how do parents so know? promise you nostradamus don't. is not coming for you yes exactly like no you're you're gonna be fine more like nostradamus <laughs> I, I mean, I, think, I found out about um, uh, the terrifying uh, looming specter of my own mortality from fucking Oregon Trail. Kids bounce back. Yeah, no, it happens. <laughs> well, I, I, I always tell parents, I distinctly remember 
one year I went to Disney World as a child, and we went to the Haunted Mansion, and I was totally into Ghostbusters. And so the entire time we're on the ride, I'm like, pretend ghost busting all the ghosts in the Haunted Mansion. That sounds like the most six-year-old thing you could possibly do, and I approve. Yes. Yeah. Now, the following year, I had found out about mortality, and now oh. I was terrified by the Haunted Mansion, and that the concept was that people had died and they were stuck at Disney World forever. <laughs> oh, God, that is a fate so much worse than that. Like, that was a concept that ran through my mind that you could be basically damned to a theme park ride, and it was just like... Oh my god, are you guys okay? How are we dealing with this? How are you having fun? <laughs> that That's only like happened a couple though. times. <laughs> there are so many ghosts on that ride, it has happened thousands of times. <laughs> <laughs> Creaky. Not even that one, it's the, uh, what was it, the, uh, the Jamboree one, I think it was? Ah, it's the Country Bears Jamboree. That also is a fate worse than death. <laughs> yeah, somebody actually did die during that. Oh my god, really? <laughs> yeah, because you know how it, like, rotate round and everything no, no. like that? No, what, oh, what you're thinking someone of... Someone got caught in the gears. Okay, yeah. Yeah, what what you're thinking of is actually the Carousel of Progress. Oh, and yeah, no. That does make sense. Technically, that death was... They changed it for the Bicentennial in 1976. And it ro in order to change it so it wasn't the same ride, it rotated backwards... And nobody had safety tested it rotating backwards. Like, nobody could get stuck in it when it was rotating forwards. But when they set it to rotate backwards, that crushed a person to death. Jesus. So there's your fun Disney oh. fact for the day. <laughs> that wasn't fun at all. That wasn't fun at all, but then no Disney facts are fun. There is no such thing as a fun yeah. Disney fact. I was just about to say that. Like, oh, did you um, uh, did you know about did you hear about the time uh, good old kindly Uncle Waltz tried to run somebody over with his car because he um, uh, they were charged starting a union. I was going to say that, that could not have only have happened once. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. just the time they proved it. There's the time that we have like you know a, a shitload of a literal shitload of evidence of it occurring. There's a black and incidentally, that whole the Disney strike that got Walt to run people over. It yeah, no, that was what that's what it was. He didn't actually run them over. Apparently, he hit the brakes. He suddenly realized, wait, this might be a bad idea at the last second. I won't be uh, able to stop my. I won't be able to undo that. It's actually kind of interesting how they got to that point because, basically, in a manner of speaking, like, don't take this as me saying that Disney isn't in any way good, but at the time. <laughs> Great preface. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> At the time, there were two huge animation studios. The other one was, I believe, Flesher. And Fletcher, yeah. Flesher treated its employees like shit. And Disney, as in very distinctly Walt Disney at this time, treated his, theoretically treated his employees well, but actually quantifiably treated his employees well. Like, for instance, he was known for... Paying oh, for, Disney like, was known like, he's for the um, actual uh, like guy Disney was trying his best. I he... thought we trusted each other. Yeah, yeah no, that was Disney... the thing. He was doing well, and then Flesher went on strike, and everyone was like, "Well, things suck there." Of course, they went on strike, and then Disney went on strike, and Walt Disney was like, "You fuckers!" <laughs> and it's yeah, no, kind of Disney like... was totally blindsided by the idea that like anybody. Disney um, uh, never really understood on any level that like he um, uh, that like he shouldn't be like the God King because I was about he to say, always what do you genuinely mean, I'm believed. The bad guy. <laughs> he always genuinely believed there was no set of circumstances to, where he could even theoretically be the bad guy. Yeah, no, he was very this much why Epcot by in particular is. More. This is why Epcot in particular is so incredibly interesting to me because. Uh, the first time I went there, like you know, when I was a kid, I, we took a little tour, like you know, like they do, and the um, uh, and the guy told us what Epcot stood for, and they said, ah, community of the future, and I was like, even as a little kid, huh, that's weird. Why would they call us a community? Isn't this a theme park? People don't live here. They were supposed to. The entire point of Epcot was not to be a chitsy theme park, which it is. It was to be a company town. Oh, in, yeah. Uh -huh. Where nobody was allowed to, um, uh, no where, where everybody had to be, be now. 
where everyone had to be gamefully employed at all times, where teenagers would be stuck in a building full of snitches. <laughs> yes, that is the only way to describe it. He had um, uh, he had lots of thoughts on what he called the teenager problem, which was that teenagers like to hang out and, you know, do teenager stuff. <laughs> and, oh, really? um, uh, and where nobody could vote. And oh. where um, uh, and where people could take tours of your house to see all the fancy new stuff they had installed in them, which meant you also could the choose community your tomorrow appliances. Looks like now, motherfucker. <laughs> which means you also could not choose your appliances, or like which dishwasher you wanted to use, or your schedule, or what color you painted your house, or basically even how you had your furniture laid out. It was basically the homeowners association from hell. <laughs> yes, that was the oh, idea. Which is- you know, saying something. And yeah, any, no, given it, it, di- like... any given, any given, I feel like any given "quote unquote" Disney adult is probably like two thirds of the way there. Oh, they're they're oh, trying yeah. to get it going now. Oh no, no, yeah. they have gotten it going. There no, is... I mean, in terms of being like, if you have, if you live in a HOA that involves a "quote unquote" Disney adult, you probably are basically dealing with a mini version. Of this. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> but the thing about it is, period. the thing about like the whole Disney Company Town idea is, it has happened. Like it's currently on its fourth actual attempt now. Epcot obviously never got off the ground. Disney died in the middle of it. Thank God. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, they had they tried Celebration, which was basically just, hey, we bought the Orlando subdivision. Now we're gonna sell the houses and be the HOA, and your HOA will be Disney. The houses were all super close together, kind of really garish, and the little shopping area at the center of it was just like, you know, the most chitsy little place. Um, uh, Disney then sold their stake in it pretty much immediately after realizing, after all the residents realized that living at Disney and visiting Disney are not the same thing. (laughs) That one, um, uh, that one, um, that one crashed shockingly quickly. Uh, Disney has always had a company town in the form of their student dorms. Which is yeah. hilarious. Yeah, I, I will not share. Dorms, not exactly anything anybody would. I used to. Oh no, a girl they're horrible. Alice, they are yeah. horrible. They are horrible. Uh, I will not repeat the story of how I know they're horrible. You already have heard it. <laughs> Sorry, screaming red skull. Um, no, no, I probably don't even want to know. You know, <laughs> you really don't. Um, and um, uh, but now they're doing their um, uh, like on park living, which is basically like eight houses right now, all of which costing $10 million. So it's really just for the most insane, super rich Disney stands. <laughs> I think like, I think like what's going to happen there is that like uh, Ryan Reynolds and like The Rock and like a bunch of other like ridiculously famous people will buy one and then never live in it. <laughs> oh, so and then like eventually. I mean, vaguely related, not specifically Disney, but just exploiting stars. Did anybody read any of the uh, Bruce Willis stuff that came out recently? Oh yeah, that was ugly. That's terrifying. Like, just basically propping up his name as literal human being for the purpose of let's promote a movie or six. (laughs) Like, literally elder abuse. And it's like, good job. Oh, yeah. um, Like, it's unclear how long that they've been doing that, but the answer is way longer than you want to think. (laughs) Wait, what are you talking about? Uh, Bruce Willis. He, uh, he... He came out that he contracted something, but that's all I... He has aphasia, which is a form of uh, dementia. It's not a dementia per se. It's um, uh, it's more accurately described as, like, a communication disorder. Uh, Basically, it means he'll, like, he's losing the ability to communicate. He's not, like, going insane, but he is losing the ability to speak slowly. Well, it's also, he, he supposedly does not know where he is a lot of the time. Oh, okay. In that case, yeah, no, that, that is that, that. That definitely is. Uh, and it's I was like, not it's... fully informed on this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like it's it's bad. It's real bad. People have spoken to him on set in previous movies, where like you know he was being guided around, and they were using uh, whatever system they have with like a a earpiece that feeds him the lines that he's supposed to be saying, and like he was involved in movies, and very distinctly there were things in his contract that like he's not supposed to do monologues and just basically if you put this all together it's clear what's happening yeah for a while i thought you know i assumed as i do with most rich and famous people that he was just like at the point in his career where he's like fuck you i'm famous i'm not working hard which you know reasonable when you're in your 60s yeah which makes perfect sense (laughs) yeah he's like 67 now 
but apparently the apparently it was much worse than just that. Yeah, is that he was basically yeah. being propped up, and it's been distinctly noted that a number of his movies had international releases, and they would not have had international releases if Bruce Willis was not attached. So yeah, basically he was being exploited for his reputation in a time that theoretically he may or may not have been even completely aware of what he was agreeing to. Yeah, like yeah it's, it's unclear how long this has been going on. Well, that's fucked up. Indeed. Yeah. Hellish thing. But he's been in, like, a shit ton of, like, stuff. Really bad today, movies so. lately. Yeah, like, the last two so years, the, it's like, what, half a dozen? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's like six movies, and it's like, what the fuck? And it's like, certainly at least since then people have known, because that's definitely someone being like, ride the cash cow until it's gone. Yeah, now that's 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 just that's just uh, uh, that's just fucking great. So yeah, if he winds up buying a house at a Disney property, then you just know something. <laughs> that's that's definitely someone being like, we'll stunt purchase this as long as you pay us. <laughs> Elder abuse is very profitable. <laughs> mm-hmm. So no you're idea. flying around a, a fanciful um, uh, ice land. Yeah, there, the, uh, there's I, supposed a to big be... cream puff. And I just got to the most horrifying scene in Hotline 2. <laughs> God, this scene hurts. But much. would it be allowed in Australia? No. No, maybe. No, this game's allowed in Australia. No, this game is just... Kirby is Australia. also not allowed in Australia, but that's for unrelated reasons. <laughs> yeah, for unrelated reasons. It's just Kirby, I'm gonna talk shit about the Prime Minister. I was gonna say he <laughs> made fun of the boot. <laughs> oh man, it's very easy to convince an Australian that like you should eat eat a kangaroo. They hate those fucking things. <laughs> if Kirby ate a kangaroo, everybody would just cheer. The entire bus. It's apparently would laugh. decent meat, but also like those things are vicious fuckers. Oh yeah, no, they're absolutely dastard. My understanding is that most things in Australia are vicious. Oh yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> but these things are also vicious and large, and it's like they just run into your car. It's like while well, your car is over. <laughs> well, that's how most animals act. I mean, have you ever been to Maine with their moose? Like, I was people don't like mooses talk- either. I, I was talking to a, a Maine native in Maine, and I was like, "Oh, these moose can't be that crazy." And then I actually saw the moose, and I was like. The size of a Hummer. <laughs> like, yeah, they're gigantic and like they they do not abide by man's law. Yeah, and they just walk astride like Paul Bunyan, like creating the Great Lakes. <laughs> like, they're just like, "Fuck you, I'm a moose." You I can believe us. I've seen deer do the same thing, and they're smaller. I was about to say, yeah. I I live with deer. Like, I was involved. Like, it, in a like car the moose is just deer. the is just the Pokemon style evolution of a large deer. Yeah, no, I, and <laughs> and I understand where that comes from, which I suppose I have to tell my deer story. My my friends and I. My deer friend. Yes, my friends and I were driving back from a college door, but I was in college. Makes sense, and. We're driving on a road, and there's a deer, and it jumps out in front of our driver, and the driver swerves to avoid the deer. Now, we're talking about a time frame of maybe three seconds, but we all shout deer, and he swerves and avoids the deer. And then in the back seat is my friend Sean, who is kind of like laid out, like it's the end of the night, he's just kind of laying back there and chilling, and he just says... In a completely colloquial way, there's another deer. And then we hit the other deer. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh. Yeah, makes sense. They always travel back. I just yeah, just in, your, in my head, uh, there's another deer. <laughs> there's another deer. We were back. And for the record, that deer was launched in like kind of a perfect arc. It was, it was sad. <laughs> Did you at least get venison out of the deal? No, no you but don't we want... did get a total cost. <laughs> Nobody wants roadkill venison. Maybe you don't. Terrible. No. I mean, meat is meat. It doesn't matter how it's killed. Yeah, it kind of does, actually, because then you get the uh, intestines and stuff like that. Plus, spoil them with good meat. All I'm going to say is, I've been confronted with it before, and all I'm going to say is that... If I'm going to eat a wild animal, I'm going to eat one that lived in the forest, not in the city. Because who knows what they ate. I mean, it makes a certain amount of sense. 
because I was at a party where the they roasted a pig, but they also cooked squirrels that they got somehow. And like, I'm not gonna eat a city squirrel. I just like the city tone that you were saying that they got somehow. I I don't know how they got it. There's they only probably, one place you like, get squirrels. <laughs> That's uh, every no shit, but I don't know how they got it. Like I don't know if they like caught it and killed it, or if they like shot it with a slingshot or some shit. Like they had squirrel that they cooked, and I was, they were like, "Yeah, you could eat it." Like I was like, "No, I will not eat that." And that's why you will miss out on getting rare and exotic diseases. I will. <sighs> I think you should get some rare and exotic diseases. I think your mom should get some rare and exotic diseases. How dare you? My mom was a saint. Okay, so what I'm I, going well, to Well, I might do... be too, but you don't know that. <laughs> You're is... right, I don't. I'm going I only to know my mom. That we're close to the end of the night, so... Probably, what... yes. What we're getting I'm... pretty punchy, yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let Kirby sleep for a second, because that way it makes him stronger. Oh, can you upgrade Kirby the sleep? sleep line? You can, can you upgrade, upgrade the sleep, sleep? <laughs> so Kirby summons an entire bed to himself. Advanced sleep. And that makes Kirby faster and stronger. And then I'm going to get Just like that, right? And then I'm going to head out and I'm going to kill Wispy Woods. <laughs> Yeah. That is how we're going to catch him. <laughs> I am going to head out because I need to go to bed. Okay. Have, Have a good, good one. Good show. Yeah, he really is wearing the Mad Max muzzle. <laughs> <laughs> There's a black cloud over the tent. Let's be ready. Now I just want to rewatch Fury Road again. That movie is so fucking good. Do it. Mm -hmm. Bench. You're not the boss of me. I am. Oh, damn. You're right. You are the boss of me. My taxes pay your salary. <laughs> damn. Wait, I'm not a public. I'm not a public employee. <laughs> and yet, here we are. <laughs> Tell it works, Speed. Come on, you need to know these things. There is no, like, funnier impotent threat to me than my taxes pay your salary. <laughs> Like, yeah, that makes you one of how many people paying taxes? Also, if you're the sort of person that makes that specific threat, you're probably rich to the point where you, or you have a, a tax evasion down to an art. <laughs> I mean, legitimately, I feel like that specific threat is something that I've heard from people of all strata because I feel like it is, like, basically there to be able to be said for the purpose of, like, like, you're not in control here, I'm in control here, because I paid for you. And, and like I said, I- I like made I've heard, you! I, I've literally heard teenagers say that, so... You don't pay taxes, you little shit. Exactly. <laughs> but I may have been a teenager at the time, and, you know... <laughs> I wasn't going to call my friend out on that thing. <laughs> Dang, hammer's rat wreck tropical woods. Feel like tropical woods should be should be strong against hammers. I like that they got a little bit. I'm not a straight. Yeah, no, that's nice. That's that's that that sells the look. All right, we have rescued some coins. I'm going to call it an evening. All right. So I hope Come everyone has enjoyed Kirby. I have. It was very nice. Yeah. Kirby's a, good guy. a great deal. I didn't even take any. Oh no, I, I did take damage. It's just telling me I could clear it without taking any damage. Good. <laughs> Think well, of what you could have had. Everybody have a good night. Yeah. Have it's a good one been all. fun. Thank See, you yeah. everyone I'm, for watching, and next time we promise to read the chat, I swear. I promise not to. No, I'm not going to make promises I can't keep. Thank you for watching an even worse production. <laughs> Alright.